week, I murdered a rock. Angela Stone hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. They call me the problem, but you could call me the can man, because anybody can get it. Africans, Americans, Dominicans, Mexicans, anybody can get it. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Live to the conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody who I'm Sonny Lipton. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their club. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. Yes. You never give me a fair shake. HBO needs to fire you. You don't know shit about boxing. You ain't shit. You're, you're not shit. I wish I was 50 years younger and I'd kick your ass. You won't do shit. When you hit the pedal, ain't gonna be no gas for the car at the end of this. All right? Your combination saying nobody in this division has the size of dog. Run them combinations, knock the grease off this dude. And then swim without getting wet. Pants. Last night I cut the light off in my bedroom. Hit the switch was in the bed for the room with dog. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, Lennox Lewis. Lennox, I'm coming for you. I'm going to show you how great I am. All right, boxing fans, we're back with another edition of the Boxing Voice. It's kind of going to be a Valentine's edition, being as though that today's Valentine's. I'm joined by joined by my special co-host today, Ephraim Fernandez. Ephraim, what's going on, baby? What's happening? And just uh, getting ready for this week of boxing. It's a little dim, and it's been that way uh, for about, I don't know, a week or so. Postponements, but, man. <laughs> and cancellations. How many people are going to get injured? How many fights are going to get canceled? Shit, I'm scared I might get injured, shit. <laughs> Tell me about it, man. Um... Uh, most recently, of course, we all know the Devin Alexander. That one is uh, off. Um, what else? How many other cancellations is there? Uh, shit, there's everywhere, dude. But one that I'm hoping for is probably going under the radar is uh, that I'm excited for. I was real excited for Kel Brook and Devin Alexander. But what I'm really looking forward to now is Vasquez and, and uh, Ricky Burns. I'm hoping nothing happens. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh it's funny you bring that up, man, because uh, I was with uh, Broner on Tuesday. I did a few video interviews with him, and uh, we kept talking about the Ricky Burns thing, man. And uh, I would really like to talk to Ricky Burns and find out what's going on. Why is he not making this fight? Like, what's really going on? You know what I mean? Because they're putting the blame on him, but I haven't seen anything in the media saying anything different. Uh, like, if it wasn't Ricky Burns' fault, I've heard he's priced himself out and things like that. So I, I really would like to talk to him and see what's going on. What's going on in that month? Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I want to add, um, what was I going to say? Shit. Um, that um, fucking Ricky Burns is like a Mayweather-Pacquiao decision. We'd like to see him together, but really, they don't need each other. I mean, dude, uh, Ricky Burns got UK on lock. I mean, he could just fight over there for the rest of his career, and people would like him. But, I mean, it would be good to see him come over. No, you're absolutely right about that. But the the only problem I have with that is that, you know, he's he's not really fighting, I don't know, the same level. I guess it is the same level of opposition. You know what? Because I don't want to get bashed on the comments later. He's not fighting Euro bums. <laughs> no, I guess it is. No, no, no. It's not about Euro bums. I guess he is fighting the same level of opposition because, I mean, you got Broner going against Reese, who nobody feels is – a worthy opponent but look at the standard broners at though look at the standard we like we were automatically want to throw broners to the lions for some reason that's just who boxing fans are but yeah but we want to do the same with ricky burns the problem is that you don't hear as much of it because we all know he's not coming over here but think about it when he was at 130 we wanted him to fight broner then yeah but i mean dude fought cat cities and now it's going on uh going for um for vasquez hey, that's respect to me and which I think Vasquez is gonna gonna win. <laughs> so and uh, I, I I agree with you, but let me ask you. Um, you you said you respect his resume. So 
if you had to compare the two, who who's faced the tougher opposition? Is it uh, Rangers or is it Adrian Broner? Well, let me, let me just throw this out there. Um, the first time I saw Broner, uh, the first time I saw Broner, um, it was uh, HBO, which Ponce de Leon. And that was a close fight, and I actually thought Broner won. And and the, all HBO commentary were saying uh, Broner's not ready, this and that, and uh, he lost by two points. Even Roy Jones was saying that. And usually you find Roy Jones backing up the black fighter, but uh, not this time. And uh, after Ponce de Leon, his competition went down some. Like they they said, okay, maybe he's not ready. Let's 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 take it down the notch. And he's been looking great ever since. You think so? I mean, so you consider Jason Litzow a step down? I do. I do from Ponce de Leon, yes. But hey, Ponce de Leon got shit got canceled too. <laughs> yeah, that's another fight they got canceled. Uh, Velez pulled out. What, he's got an ankle injury? An uh, ankle injury. Now, uh, back to the Ponce de Leon thing, though. Let me uh, let me just pull this up. You know I'm a boxer at Gangster. I don't play around. <laughs> we like facts around here. Yeah, I like facts. I don't like just... You know, guessing, but Ponce de Leon, he's, he's lost all those big fights. I mean, he just won the Johnny Gonzalez fight, but remember, he lost to York Eros Gamboa, he lost to Adrian Broner, he lost to Juan Manuel Lopez. I mean, he's he's that rare fighter like Angulo that you got to match perfectly. Yeah, there's people who can beat him, but I mean, we want him in these pay per view undercards that just, I mean, just just in case the main event didn't li- live up to the height. And we had a we had a banger. <laughs> Two oh three, you're live on a boxer voice. Who's this? Two oh three, you're live. Who's this? That's not. Call two oh three back, man. Let me hanging up on us. Somebody calling in. Enjoy the following music while your party is being reached. <laughs> you have reached the sprint. <laughs> And the voicemail, but uh, I mean, look, Broner's face to Marco Vicente Escobedo. He's also a guy that was in there with some pretty good fighters. So, I guess, would you consider Escobedo and Cat Cities on the same level? Uh, yeah, I actually would. Uh, hold on, who Escobedo? Yeah, I think Cat Cities is a bit above him. That's my thing. Escobedo, with all those losses, Cassidy has. Yeah, but I mean, shit. He he went he went he went toe to toe with Marquez for whatever that's worth. <laughs> because I'm just skimming over this record, man. I really wish some of our UK fans call in, see if they can help me out with this Ricky Burns record because um, I'm not seeing much of anything. I mean, I mean, I think I think they're hurting for another star, dude. I mean, they're hurting for another Ricky Hatton, which I mean, he's just. I don't I don't know if he could live up to, but I mean that's what that's what the UK fans want. That's what they need. Somebody to stand behind because uh Tyson Fury, I don't know, I don't know. I mean the dude's good though. Tyson Fury is gonna be tested and uh we'll see what he's made of. In the US too, right? He's coming yeah, over uh he's coming over to uh New York, man. He's gonna be fighting in New York actually. First first time I saw him fight, he was on Showtime. Tyson Fury against Rich Power, and they were just shitting on their names. He's like, these guys need to give their names back or something like that. I remember that. I remember that fight. <laughs> because uh, one had the Fury and the other one was... I had the Power. And uh, they weren't fighting like it. But that's because Tyson Fury was raw, but he's come a long way. Man, Tyson Fury is... Man, I, I want to stick on this this uh, comparison. Oh, yeah. I like to jump around a lot. I do that. <laughs> I want to know, in your eyes... Where do you value the Mark, the Miguel Vasquez fight for Ricky Burns? Is that the equivalent of the Broner DeMarco? Or mm. is Miguel Vasquez a better champion in your eyes than DeMarco? I think he's, I think he's the better fighter. I really do. <laughs> is he the better fighter in your eyes because he's been winning? Just because he's the... Lost? Because he, at the time, DeMarco was ranked higher than Vasquez. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think just the fact that dude went with Timothy Bradley, went with Canelo twice. I mean, if he can take Canelo, Canelo probably wasn't the same fighter. But if you can take Canelo's punches from back in the day, you no problem handling a person your own weight. And Ricky Burns, I think, is a shorter fighter in this fight. 
Yeah, but uh, you got to remember when he fought Canelo, it was his debut. It wasn't like that. Even says more. But my thing, my thing, what I'm trying to say is, it wasn't like they, you know, were doing him any favors. That was an accident, dude. Yeah, yeah, that was an accident, and people say they were looking out for, you know, Canelo. Like he was the invested interest there. Well, that card was uh, Siete Hermanos, which was all seven brothers fighting, supposedly 5-1 and two loss, supposedly. And uh, I guess that was that was uh, Miguel Vasquez on there. So it was their card. It was the Vasquez card? Well, you know, it, w- it was the Alvarez, the seven brothers of Alvarez, all seven brothers fought. Exactly. And, you know, exactly. And, they got it him, was, and they got him a debuting fighter so that he could win. Yeah, and uh, uh, Canelo, I think, was nine and zero and four and zero at the time. <laughs> and not to mention that you know Vasquez was had no experience. I mean, I don't know. I guess I guess at this point it doesn't even matter. Um, the 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 point is that all roads lead to each other, and we must get to fight. Yeah. And uh, what you think about uh, what you think about uh, Vasquez versus uh, Gesta? Who did you have when? No, I I picked that. Um, I knew Vasquez was going to outbox him. Same way, like, I think he's going to outbox Burns because Burns is a good boxer himself, but he doesn't have power. So Vasquez already fights from the outside, and now he has nothing to worry about in terms of power. And don't forget, Burns has two losses on his record, man. I mean... I don't know. A lot of things people get confused. They think uh they think Vasquez is scared of power. Like dude does that to set up offense. All he does is look for another angle. And he's not scared to get hit, which I think he should be scared to get hit, especially against Broner if that fight ever happens. But uh I really want a UK guy to call in, man. I know it's a little late over there. I need to, man. I need a UK guy to call in because see I can automatically say oh Bernard's got the better resume because I know these names you know yeah we, we've I seen them. I know Eloy Perez hey you have been at half of them Juan's Dan Leon yeah you know what I mean I know Guillermo Sanchez these are these are fighters that I know that while I would never pick them to beat Broner they're still you know fighters that we've seen tested and possess some sort of test to a young up-and-coming fighter which was Broner at the time of these fights. So I don't know the the, the uh, I can't say the same for Burns. I don't really know these guys that he's fighting. Like I'm looking at his resume. I can't. Like you know, look at this fight. I mean, this is what bothers me about him. I don't even have the time to count, but it looks like something around his twenty something fight. He fought a two four and one fighter. How is yeah. that acceptable? You know, I don't know. It's, it, that's not cool. That's crazy. And before this, um, before this fight with Vasquez was signed, he was about to fight a thirteen and zero fighter. Yeah, I, I do remember that. I was listed on box record. Now it's not because yeah, he made this unification, and uh, this this is really gonna help him get some recognition here in the states. And like you said, he doesn't need it. They don't need each other. Yeah, they don't. But I'll tell you this. I think there's probably more people that believe in Broner's skill and ability than there is that believe in Ricky Burns because Ricky Burns, he shocked everybody by stopping Kevin Mitchell. Like, I thought, oh, I've seen that. I thought he was going to beat Kevin Mitchell. I didn't think he was going to stop Kevin. Yeah, Mitchell. I, I recall that big ass overhand right that came out of nowhere, and we didn't. Nobody said nobody. Everybody said they didn't believe uh, Burns had power like that. Exactly. I mean, he only has ten knockouts, dude. So, hey, I saw somebody on the on the pound for pound list has like forty fights and like one one knockout. Who's that Cunha's dude or something like that? Oh, that was the guy that Marquez was supposed to fight. How, how do you how do you have how do how is that possible, dude? Pounder, right? Huh? One hundred and forty pounder. I think so. I don't think he's on a pound for pound list. You, you might be talking about the top ten welterweight division. Yeah, I'm talking about probably talking about that. But y'all saw that. His name keeps. Hanging out in that division because he's gonna be a tune-up fight for one of the bigger names. Like he'll probably yeah. 
Khan's next fight, the way he was going to be Marquez's next fight, you know, and uh, they got to keep his name relevant. They got to keep his name up there. Yeah. Fans don't automatically say, "Who the hell is this guy?" And why? It's, it's like it's like Chris John. They like to put him there, but we never see him fight. <laughs> no, Chris John's just another story, dude. This guy, I mean, aside from the win over Marquez, that was like, I don't know how many years ago. Uh, this guy's just fighting Indonesian people over there, and making numbers. That's all he's doing. Yeah, you know, he really doesn't care. He needs to. He needs to. He needs to definitely get off that high horse and come over here. But I mean. They don't need it. That's what's... Yeah, supposedly he, he doesn't even want to fight anymore. I think he's retiring or something like that. Hey, yo, what happened to Katsidis, man? I, I I missed the story. Oh, um, uh, do the doctor's not approving him, right? Oh, I I don't know. I just saw Katsidis fight and then it's off and then. Yeah, yeah, because he he couldn't get um cleared. Couldn't get cleared, man. I had a little. I had a little. Uh, I got some new sounds and stuff, man. I got a. a, a whole... Full switchboard here. Full oh, of hell. I hope I don't fuck up and you use them on me. No, 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 man. I had one for, for a guy like... Uh, a guy ATL, like, no. Nah. No, no, no. A guy like uh, the Indonesian cat we was just talking about. Chris John. Chris John, man. I had something. <laughs> I don't know where it's at now, man. And I told Matt I would use it anytime somebody says something about that, but whatever. Some sound bites. <laughs> I got a yo, dude. I got a, I got a, I got a whole bunch. But anyway, anyway, um, we're gonna have a guest on a little later in the show. It's gonna be Javier Lawyer. He's from Phoenix, Arizona. Um, people might know him for taking on Jose Benavidez. Uh, I don't want to give too much on him because, of course, he'll be on. So we'll get the opportunity to do that. Uh, we also have to preview and debate the the Delvin Rodriguez versus uh, Joe Comanche Rod boy. Yeah, I'm glad you cut me off because I was going <laughs> to I didn't want you to. Uh, it's I heard your Spanish before. And it was not nice. Yeah, but that's not even Spanish, dude. <laughs> that's, uh, he's Native American or something like that. How come I never seen him fight at the Winstar Casino, which my boy uh, Robert Marroquin is going to headline top-ranked card on March the 16th to be announced opponent? How come you never seen who fight there? Uh, Comanche boy. They say he only fights in Oklahoma. Yeah, well, he's got his own casino. Check his box wreck every time he's been in the casino, and uh, it's been in an Indian casino at that. Man, I can't. I still haven't found this thing. I can't believe. Oh, here it goes. Damn. And 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 mind you, full disclaimer. I know this is not his nationality. <laughs> but, but man, Chris John does look that way. So. It, it, we could have used that. What is he from? He's from Singapore or something? Or? Oh, isn't he from Indonesia? He's from Indonesia. I don't know nothing about Indonesia. I think these shoes are from Indonesia, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, it's something like that, though. But, man, like I was saying, uh, I don't know. Hey, uh, let, let's touch on that subject. You said, uh, I remember you said, um, uh, Golden Boy, their lawyer, he put in Figueroa and Michael Perez a fight that I – personally didn't want it to happen because I thought both of these guys are good and he just basically took the winner and ran with them. Um, are you repeating what I said? Yeah, no, no, I'm not repeating what you say. I'm just saying it's crazy how you thought like that too and nobody else, uh, I think they brushed you off when you said that. <laughs> yeah, man, that fight was really tough for me, bro. Michael Perez is from my hometown. And yeah, I, and I like the kid. <laughs> I like him too, but let me tell you something. After that fight, all his fights have been looking tough. He got dropped in the last round on the Magdalene. Uh, Magdaleno was it? No, no. The little brother one? Oh no, hold on. Uh, I think is is what ends in oh Magdalene Lando or something like that. I don't know. But um, yeah, he's been looking pretty match pretty damn tough. He has been matched tough, but in the Fidel fight, last name Magdaleno or not Magdaleno, but Magdalano, I think, or something like that. Um, he was supposed to win that fight. He did, but he was supposed to win. This is a guy he already beat in the amateurs. Yeah. And in the Figueroa fight, he was supposed to win that fight. He did not, but he was supposed to win because Figueroa has less of an amateur background and a way more raw skill set. Like, yeah. he's wide. 
He's a little wild. Man, Perez did not did not stop throwing him body punches with that, which I thought was going to stop uh stop Figueroa. Yeah, but Figueroa was throwing his own body punches, and the kid hits hard, man. Yeah. I've seen Figueroa since, man, since that I That was my to, first time seeing him. What? I've been watching that dude since I had to get streams on some site called, like, University something. It's, it, it's um... It's a site that uh, that covers his local town. He's from West Laco or some shit. Yeah, Wallasco, Wala- Texas. Yeah, little little itty bitty town, and uh, they would have all his fights on this little website. It was like a high school website, and I seen a bunch of his four rounders. The kid is tough, man. He oh shit! Hard with either hand. His demeanor. I mean, when I saw that fight, I mean, dude, you know, where's the little rule I had with the guy that's moving less in the ring before the fight is the guy's gonna lose, and he was just kind of like, well, here I go. And just, I don't know, man, because he's got that. You know, they, they really signed him because I, I know the whole backstory on this kid. They really signed him as like the next golden boy. You know that because Oscar De La Hoya, um, personally went down there, and I think. And, you know, took him, like, to Golden Boy with him and his father and, you know, treated him like a star. And a yeah. lot of publicity was done on him because he's he's not a bad-looking kid. He's attractive. He's got good hair. He's Mexican, Mexican-American. Texas. Oh, he's from Texas. And he was he's punching like a bulldozer. Yeah. But they didn't know that he was going to stay so raw. Like, we just had Joel Diaz on um, last week, and – and that's his fighter now because, you know, he switched trainers from his dad to Jesse James Leha to now Joel Diaz. Mm-hmm. And uh, the problem is he looks real raw. He doesn't want to change, dude. He's like a put his head down, come forward, hit to the body. Like, he reminds me a lot of Maidana, the way his attitude towards fighting is. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, he, he does do, you know, he's just like a balls to the wall type of guy, bottom line. You know, he's going to come at you. And he's gonna. And that's what usually comes with these guys with a lot of power. Usually they don't listen too damn good. I mean, it's just it's just the the nature of fighting. Yep, yep, yep. But yeah, man, that fight it was tough for me because uh, I like both guys, man. I like both guys, and uh, it didn't work out. It didn't work out the way I wanted. Hey, look who joined us, Victor Salazar. What's, What's good? What's happening? Yo. Nah, man, we just going over, uh, you know the. The hard time I had swallowing the fact that Michael Perez got thrashed by Omar Figueroa. Hey, I'm hurting over here too, man. <laughs> just bringing it up. Um, but we were talking Ricky Burns. And I want to ask you, Vic. Ricky Burns, Adrian Broner, they're clearly on two roads that lead to a, a unification. I want to ask you, whose resume is better in your eyes? Because I really want a U.K. guy to call. So somebody from the U.K., 201. 688-7127. Somebody tell me some of these names on Ricky Burns' resume so that we can know. Because, see, I can go down the list on Broner. And whether or not we feel Broner hasn't been tested or he's been put in soft, we know the names. We know the names. We've seen them fight. And we've seen them get some wins. You know what I mean? Like, I was just on there and um, – you know, of course, everyone knows Antonio DeMarco, Vicente Escobedo, Eloy Perez. Um, I don't know Eloy Perez. He came out of the blue to me, I swear to God. So you don't watch Solo Boxeo? Yeah, I saw that, but I, I mean, all I see was Tyson Martinez. He was always on Solo Boxeo. All his fights were on Solo Boxeo. All of them. But Solo Boxeo is shady as hell, dude. Sometimes they're at 11 o'clock, sometimes they're at 1 o'clock. Well, you're on the way. Well, no, you're, you're central time. Yeah. It's tougher for the West Coast, but it doesn't even matter. Rodriguez, solid dude. Not solid like he's going to be. He's a world beater, but he's a solid dude. You know what I mean? He's a guy with 34 wins and two losses. Solid dude. Jason Litzow. He's a, I don't know if you want to say solid. Some people might say solid. But Celestino Caballero. I'm going to say he's an up and down kind of fighter. Yeah, it depends on which Jason Litzow shows up. Exactly. It depends which Jason Lissau you get. I'm going to say it before someone leaves it in the comment and say, oh, he's punch drunk. He talks with a slur. We know that. We know Does that. he? Shit. Oh, hell yeah. Mm. Hell yeah. But, um, but then you got punts. I feel I feel that Broner lost that fight. I won't ever stop saying I feel he lost that fight by two rounds. No, he lost in Fort Worth. He lost against Fernando Quintero or something like that. 
Quintero. What was that? An eight rounder? An uh, eight rounder ESPN in Fort Worth, nah, Texas. I've seen that fight. That shit, dude, that was. Fight. Yo, it was tight, but I give it to Broner. I I I see that fight, and Vic, don't I always tell you about that fight? That's yeah. when Broner was, I think, eight and zero, oh, right? Yeah, he was a young. Uh, They're he both was undefeated. A young problem. Yeah, he was a young problem. He was an eight and zero oh at that time, and uh, you know, it, but those things happen. You know? Yeah. Especially at ESPN level, but the, the the point is, we know these guys. We know these names. These names have been in with each other. Like we want to know who Burns is for. Exactly. I don't know none of those names, dude. I don't well, I mean, right right off the top, I mean, not saying it's better or not, but I mean, he did beat Rocky Martinez. Um, I get mixed up with him and John Molina. I don't know why. You're live on a boxing voice. Who's this? And I think it's my boy, uh, Louisiana, right? Nah, I was going to see you, man. What's going on? Oh, I was going to see you. What's up, baby? Nothing, man. Driving back from LA. What's good with you guys? What are we talking about? We were just comparing who has faced the better opposition, Ricky Burns or Adrian Broner? Uh, opposition? Yes. Um, that's a close one, to be honest. Uh, Adrian Broner is going to face better opposition in the future, but Ricky Burns has faced decent people. So Broner, Broner hasn't faced anybody big besides Ponce de Leon. So you don't consider DeMarco big either? I, I think No, I'm saying DeMarco is big, but... Maybe a name, DeMarco and Ponce de Leon. Other than that, nobody. Escobedo was was decent, but at the weight, it wasn't fair. I bet he can't pick a person that Broner's fault. What do you mean? What about Litzau? You don't consider Litzau a name? And what, one round or two rounds? He'd be, he be a Litzau? Yeah, but, but you're going to discredit him for blowing out a guy? That's not his fault. I don't know. I think Lissa was was uh, was a name and and there to be hit. As okay. Pavetta was decent. Ponce de Leon was good. Uh, okay. Demarco okay. So was good. this is this is the second part of this experiment. Now you mentioned four four names already, almost five, I think, for Broner. Who has Ricky Burns fought? Uh, I'm just I'm just you're just asking me. I just called you guys. You guys got me real quick. So I I, I don't know. Uh, what we're gonna be talking about. So I think I think uh, Demarco is fought. Demarco is is a good name. He fought Broner. Broner whooped his, whooped them. You know. So no 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 no. Hold Broner on. I'm not saying. Him. Hold on. I'm not putting you under the gun. I'm not trying to make a joke out of you. I'm actually. I'm the experiment was. Us Americans don't know Ricky Burns' resume outside of Kevin Mitchell and Michael Katsidis. Who are these other guys that he's faced? So the yeah, we, is, I, I mean, he, he uh, at one at one thirty, he did he fought Rocky Martinez too, man. Like, you guys are forgetting that he beat him pretty easily. Okay, but we seen Rocky Martinez in two fights, Vic. Look like shit. He squeezed by. I the mean, he's, he was still he was still competitive enough to even be close in those decisions. But wait, but wait. Rick squeezed by that first fight because of a point deduction that would have been a draw, and the second fight, it was a robbery. And that, that goes to show you, Ricky Burns beat him pretty easily. These guys had a different story, too. Burns is big. He's coming in, though, at 135. He fought, what, Martinez at, what, 130? Yeah. Yeah, that's a different thing. But maybe, maybe Bronner's fought the better opposition. Uh, but we're expecting a lot more out of Bronner than we are out of uh, Ricky Burns. But that's us Americans, and that's what I'm saying. The comparison that I'm trying to make in the that's just because we're in the states, though. Yeah, exactly. The experiment that I'm trying to do is because we know Broner and we're American, and we get to see his opponents. We don't get to see Ricky Burns as much. UK people have him very high, so I don't want to discredit that. I want to say Ricky Burns is everything that they say. I want someone to teach me about these guys that he's fought. Because from, you know, history shows us that you can count on one hand maybe the, the good European fighters. Well, the problem is, too, you got to remember, European fighters, they're, a lot of them are high jobs also because when they come to the U.S., <gasps> it's just the out. <laughs> I would like that one. High jobs, oh, my God. His name is... Uh, it's a lot. When they, when, they face, when they face U.S. competition, most, most, 
Euro people fizzle out. The hype is always there. You never have a problem with, with the European fan base. They support their fighters. But when the fighters come to the U.S. to get tested, it, it's a, the level of competition is, is a lot better than anything over there. So basically, when they come to the U.S., You can't win! They get that ass taxed. And that's what I've been saying, but I get a lot of guys from the UK telling me I'm crazy, and they they, they say I'm full of bollocks or rubbish. And well, I need to call in right now. I just want somebody to defend these guys because you know I'll give Carl Frotch all the credit in the world. I'll give Kalzaki his credit. He beat a, a, a younger B Hop, and B Hop went on to do great things even after that loss. And that says a lot. He beat Roy Jones, and at the time. All right, he beat Jeff Lacey. Jeff Lacey ended up being nothing after that fight, but Kawasaki was the one to do it to him, right, Vic? Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I don't know. I think I think uh, B Hop beat Kawasaki though, uh, unofficially. That's just me. Uh, but I get what you're saying. You know, these guys come over here with a lot of hype. But I think Ricky Burn. I think Ricky Burns is a good fighter, and uh, whether he beats Broner or not, I don't think so. But as far as his comp, I mean, Nicky Cook was a solid guy. Um, Nicky Cook, Rocky Martinez, oh, obviously Mike Cassis, uh, John uh, John Murray, and now he's fighting Vasquez. So aside from fighting Broner, Miguel Vasquez is a tough fight for anyone. I mean, he's gonna look, he's gonna make Ricky Burns look ugly. I don't know how Ricky Burns or why he took that fight. I'm saying it right now, I'm not waiting until it gets close. Hey, hold on, we we gonna have that question for everybody that calls in Vasquez Broner. What do you think? No, you mean Vasquez Burns? Burns. No, he's gonna get through. It's a given. He's gonna get through there. You think so? It's a I given. Vasquez fight. I don't know, dude. I don't think the Vasquez Broner fight happens because no, I it won't happen. I believe Vasquez is signed to Zanford. Zanford does a lot of business with Top Rank, and they're not going to ruin that relationship with Top Rank, man. And he's already think moving up, right? So, who's moving up? Uh, Broner. No, Broner's at one thirty-five. Broner's at one thirty-five. Got anything else to add? Because you're giving us some feedback. So if not, I'm going to let you go. Uh, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't think Burns at one thirty-five has enough pop for. For Broner to respect, so I, I don't even see it as a competitive matchup. He's not going to pop shot him and run away. Broner's going to cut off the ring and, and whoop him. The only person that can beat Broner is himself. If he comes out of shape at 135 and gets hit, I can see that happening. But this guy's a beast so far. So I don't think nobody's going to beat Broner at 135. If he moves up to 140, he'll, he'll get tested at 140. But at 135, the UK people also, uh, besides Kazagi, you know, Khan was competitive and, and Frotch is competitive, but besides that, I don't. Maybe Kel Brook, but I don't know. Everybody else seems just a little bit uh, over overvalued. I I'm not. That. I'm not. I'm not going that far. Can't put Kel Brook in that sentence because he faced Carson Jones and Hector Saldivia. Like and went life or death with Carson Jones. Tell me about it. Got his nose. So I, I'm saying, my, my, what I'm saying is he's going to get tested against Devin Alexander. We'll see if he overvalued or not. That's that's the main thing. At least he's coming here and trying to face the best. Is that fighting happening? England. Yeah, that fight hasn't even been uh, rescheduled yet. But if it happens, that is the litmus test for him, the barometer that we do need as far as USA fans. You know what I mean? I know that. You, well, you, I, I, I'm it. happy. I'm happy to see him here. I, I think yeah. Kel Brooks. An, I think Kel Brooks an exciting fighter. Didn't and, he fight on the undercard in the U.S. somewhere? Uh, he fought on the off on the card of Kel, Kel Brook, I mean, not Kel Brook, uh, Carl Frotch and Andre Ward, I think. Yeah. No box uh, fight, but, uh, you know, I, I, I need answers on Kel Brook. The, the verdict's not out. I want I, it. I wish we had well, Box I, Nation. <laughs> well, I think, Kel, I think Kel Brook wants to, to, to prove something to us. Obviously, he's coming to the U.S. He was coming to fight Devin, and Devin got hurt. So, who knows, man? I like Kel Brook. I, I think he's got a bright upside, so maybe I'm just one of the minority over here in the U.S. No, 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 no. You're not. I like what I see because I, I get a lot, of, a lot of slack for the way that I talk, so I'm going to clarify that. I like what I see, but, again, he needs to be tested. I need to see him be tested. Like, in my eyes, you are, we went through this today. We talk boxing 24-7. In my eyes, Marcos Madonna's a bum. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm pretty sure Kel Brook. Back. <laughs> nah, nah, Kel Brook will get past Marcus McDonough without no problem. 
And uh, that's how I see it. Marcos McDonough, he, he, he's one-dimensional. And uh, he's, know, like a, he's like a Kelly you, you, didn't like, you didn't like that jab he was using against uh, Against Carras? Carras? <laughs> that shit that shit blew me out of my seat. He was hurt. That's he was hurt. Happened. Dude was hurt and all of a sudden just starts throwing a jab and it's working. <laughs> that shit shocked me. Nah man. I I, I don't like I, you know, it is what it is, you know. Nah. Nah, nah. But uh I don't know, man. I'm gonna tell you this. We're gonna get into Gavin Reeves and Broner, and it's gonna be I don't know. It's going to be a... What's the betting line? <laughs> it's going to be a murder in that ring, man. I want to go with... I want to say... Look, I'm going to be honest and say... I think Reese is going to put up a fight in the first couple of rounds. He's taking this fight serious. I interviewed him Tuesday. He came over here five... He's been over here five weeks, man. Five weeks, Ephraim. Five weeks, he's already been in the United States. He's going to get fat. So he's, taking a, he's taking it serious. He's taking it serious as what he's doing because fighters usually come days before. You know, when they're coming from the UK, they might come a week. This dude's been here for five weeks. He don't look like he come to lay down. Training and getting acclimated? No, nah, I don't think so. I well, think you, you you know you, you know he he was a, a former uh, 140 pound champion. Um, so you know Broner is a big guy, man. Uh, as far as how he carries his weight, but that was like. Five fights ago, you know, he's already at 135. He's and he's I not. I understand that. The fact no, he's not. He's like five inches shorter than Broder in real. Oh, I don't, and Broder is short. Five inches. It's like three inches, dude. Come on. But yeah, I mean, side by side, in like I was there. BB Kings is a small venue, and that's why I love it for Broadway boxing. I seen them, dude. He's short, man. I did my interview with him sitting down because it wasn't. How, how tall are you though? I know you're a freaking nature. Yeah, no, I'm six five. You know, so that, that's fucking huge. Yeah, and Eddie Hearns is taller than him. Eddie Hearns is like seven foot. Eddie Hearns is tall. <laughs> I didn't even believe that. I put my shoulders side by side. I'm like, nah, he can't be. I'm like, damn, Eddie, I didn't know you was that big. He was like, yeah, I'm. He was like, yeah, Lester, I'm taller. I'm like, mm, all right, I'll take that. I'm not gonna correct you and say my name is Lester, but it's cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. When I when I see him on Saturday, I be like, I'm Lester's boy. Yeah. What? <laughs> he watched the video while before we interviewed him. He was watching, so he'll remember you. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll be live at the at the at the top rank card. He remembers. Which one's that one? Which one's uh, that one? Which I'm talking about the Oklahoma one. Oh, oh with the the Romero one? Yeah, Mario Keane. You going to that? Yeah, I'm going to that. Oh, let me throw it out there. Fun fact: Supposedly, Mario Keane beat Broner. And Gary Russell and the amateurs, but yeah. just the amateurs that don't probably mean shit. Yeah, I I don't put much stock into the amateurs because uh, if you want to talk like that, Broner never turned what is called open class. Was that he Man. only fought nationally, right? Not internationally. So that's the thing about Broner is like they say he got three hundred fights. I'm mean, like you could have lost three hundred fights and somebody would have heard about you. That's the thing about Broner, like. Like, who has he fought in the amateurs? Like, nobody can really say, hey, I fought dude. That's because he fought nationals, not international. He didn't He didn't turn open class. He didn't try to go to the Olympics. He turned pro at 18. They, the kid's got money. He's been fighting since 18 and, and, and doing what he's yeah. been doing. You know what I mean? You can say, fuck the amateurs. <laughs> yeah, basically. I've been not seeing you still there. Guess not. Yeah, I got, him. I got you on mute, so yeah, I'm here. So what's up, man? You taking that drive from L.A.? Where where, where you was at? Man, today's Valentine's Day, man. Got to get the flowers, man, for everybody. Damn. Oh, God. Gotta, gotta Who died? Hard. Don't they deliver in your town? They deliver, man, but, I, you know, I got a lot of family. I got a lot of loved ones, so, you know, I've, I've got to go by the flower district out. Oh, so you just went straight to a rose brush with some clippers. A florist. No, it is, man. <laughs> Save money. Got the middle man out. <laughs> Uh, and flowers are dead, dude. It's all about the uh, edibles, that fruit place. <laughs> oh, man. You're, we got that idea. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man. Schedule is dim, Vic. Uh, there's a lot of... Yeah, you you, you want to know, know some bad news I just found out, man? More? That, uh, Don't give us more. Bulga- the Bulgaria bro fight is going to Vegas, man. What? Yeah. You mean Bulgaria? Whatever his name is, the, he the, said the Bulgaria. roar, 
It's actually it's, Bogeri. It's actually, Sharif Bogeri. It's actually Bogeri, remember? When we interviewed him, it's Bogeri. Oh, that's right. It's Bogeri. My bad. And Rigondu, not Rigondial. No, no, no. That's wrong. We've interviewed uh, it's Rigondal. We've, we've Rigan, interviewed him plenty of times to know that. That's HBO that botches that one. I'm calling Rigondial. Man, Rigondial is a G, and he will KO Donaire. All right, that's the topic for another discussion. Yeah, please. And, and, and oh, when's that fight? Um, when's that fight? March second. So Man, what's what? Carlos it's, gave you that information? Yeah. Ouch. So uh, yeah, we thought we were gonna be there live. I guess not. So the whole card is scrapped. Well, they're, they're moving it to Vegas. They they're gonna have B- Bulgari and a bro, and then uh, Gary Russell versus uh, somebody that you probably never heard of. Yeah. TBA. No, he's actually got an opponent. I just need to look him up and say his name correctly. It makes sense because uh, Bugatti is from uh, um, Las Vegas. Abril's from Miami. I guess that doesn't even make sense because Miami's on the other side of the map. Well, I mean, it's going to be at the Hard Rock. I mean, Hard Rock, you know, that's where the uh, it's gonna where the it's going to bring fans. Uh, yeah. Dallas Junior fan one was that. We'll get Rob and um. Eddie to go to that one then. Yeah, of course. But uh, it sucked. I wanted to be there. I mean, the more fights on the East Coast, the better. It's good for me. I have something to do on the weekends. Yeah, man. Uh, My life revolves around boxing. I'm sorry. I wish, I wish we had fights, but nobody can take us serious now. Now that we you know Texas judges, nobody takes us serious. What do you mean? You, you got Omar Figueroa, Omar second, man. You where, where are you at? Where at? In, uh, in the San Antonio? University, it's gonna be in that. It's, hey, it's gonna be in that school. I keep telling you about university. <laughs> yeah. They find it in the cafeteria or some shit. Nah, it's a late <laughs> promotions card. It's actually a good card, man. It's. A, it, I mean, it's a decent card. All right, who's the headliner? Uh, Omar Figueroa. Oh, okay, that's what's up. Right. But I mean, the, the schedule is dim, dude. I mean, Friday night fights is, is keeping us afloat. I mean, this week we got yeah. a good fight. We got a good fight with Delvin and Comanche boy. Which I mean, Del- I think Delvin has better skills, but Comanche Bull is coming in as the bigger guy. And I don't know, what do you guys think of that fight? Uh, I think that when they announce both fighters and they walk in the middle of the ring, we're gonna hear. <laughs> <laughs> and that's gonna be Delvin, dog. Yo, who who got who got the better intro though, Comanche Boy or uh, Bogaray? Well, they be coming know. in wild. Well, you know uh, what? I gotta see Comanche Boys because I don't. I've never seen them um on TV. I've all, all his fights I've seen on YouTube, dude. I've never seen him do. I mean, I'm pretty on, sure, on ESPN. I've seen him a few times. I'm pretty sure I can see the ring walk on YouTube, but I've never paid attention to it. So I don't know. It's so bad. It's good. <laughs> Oh snap! I like Bogaray's entrance though. I really do. I, I'm 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 that type of guy, man. I I, I when I think of Bogaray, I think of Apollo Creed coming in and Mayweather <laughs> coming in with on, sitting on the on the on the on the, on the big chair with the with the Greek god buff yeah. carrying him in. Like I like that, man. I like the I love Vitaly and Vladimir Klitschko. Boy, with- they come in. It's a show. It, I love that. I love what they do. I love it's that. A man. Show. that last, I think it was with David Hay with when they had Lennox Lewis and all yeah, that. and George Foreman going to get him at the dressing room. Yeah, that was uh, that was nice. I like that. I like that. But then again, that is a Klitschko. Yeah, well, you know, we got to give him props. <laughs> got to man because. That, at the end of the day, they're entertainers, and that's what they're doing. They're entertaining us not only inside but outside the ring, man. But uh, yeah, man. I don't know. In that fight, man, I, I I think Delvin has the better skill, but I think the size is just going to be too much. And man, I, I'm going with the Comanche boy, man. I'm going with, with the Native American. I'm going to see some spears, some bow and arrows. Power. I'm confused about his power. I don't know where to gauge his power at because a lot of times I'm just thinking, man, dude got a lot of water weight on him, and I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but I mean, he's never he's never really fought outside Oklahoma, so I mean, it's it's tough, man. It's tough. He could get jabbed to death. <laughs> Maybe, but the thing is, uh, Delvin isn't really a big 154 pounder. I mean, to to me, I still see Delvin as a 147 pounder, but obviously he doesn't want to fight at that weight. 
But I mean, the skill level is in Delvin's favor. But I mean, will, will it not matter because the dude is just too big? I mean, he's coming yeah. down from middleweight. And, and apparently he's a big middleweight dude. I mean, you're going to see the size difference, you know, tomorrow night. So, yeah. Well, my pick. Yeah, is that dramatic? Is Delvin? <laughs> by stoppage. And Who? I'm gonna tell you why. Comanche boy, by stoppage. Oh. I'm gonna tell you why. At 154 pounds. Delvin Rodriguez has fought Paul, uh, Paul Wallet twice and fought uh, Austin Trout. Austin Trout's a boxer. So he didn't really use his size as an advantage. It wasn't hey, that, that fight won an award for the most boring fucking fight of the year last year. Dang. And it wasn't a really tough, gritty fight. Yeah. Where Comanche Boy has nothing to lose. I think he's 34, so he's got to step on the gas. This is the fight to make his name. It's going to be nationally televised on ESPN. And he's a 168-pounder, dude. It's going to be easier for him to come down to 157 and blow back up than it is for Devin Rodriguez to even know what it's like to be hit by natural 154-pounders, let alone a natural super middleweight. So I'm going with Comanche Boy, and I think that Delvin might have to hang him up after this. I mean, his resume is really? been spotty. I mean, Vic, his resume has been spotty for a long time. He went life and death with Jackie's favorite fighter, Shimon Alvarez. I mean, he blamed a lot of his losses at the fact that he couldn't make the 147-pound limit. Like, if he loses this fight, where does he go from here? When I don't know. His biggest fight is Paul Wallach? Well, I mean, even if he loses this fight, I think he could get an Angulo fight down the road. I mean, I know they wanted that fight before. Um, I mean, that's obviously if Angulo doesn't get the Canelo fight. I mean, but, but that's down the road. Um, I don't know. I mean, you're right. This this is a crossroads path for both fighters. You know, 34 year old. You know, power punching undefeated fighter. Is he hype job? Is he just the product of him being in Oklahoma against Devin Rodriguez? You know, a guy who. Fought for a title against Austin Trout, whether it be interim or regular, whatever the hell it was, uh, you know, and you know this could be it for him. You know, if he doesn't win, where does he go? The only thing I see him doing is having that Angulo fight, and that's even if you know Golden Boy doesn't put Angulo in with uh, Canelo Alvarez. Um, hey, did he fight Centron? Who? Angulo. Yeah, he lost to Centron. He lost to Centron. Oh, uh, Centron come back. I heard. I yeah, I heard he's training. With who? Kermit the Frog. With Ronnie Shields? I don't know if he's training on Ronnie Shields, but I heard he's back in training. There's rumors out there that he was training. Oh, and he's making wow. a come and he's making a comeback uh on his own terms. Hey, did y'all see that Mosley versus the Golovkin sparring video? What? Yep. Well, How was they start with? This was huh? this was at Big Bear? This is in Big Bear? Yeah, it's at the I think at the summit. At the summit, was Dormer out there with him? I don't know. I just saw a little <laughs> small black guy in the, the locker. <laughs> sure, Dormer him. wasn't in that bitch. <laughs> and what happened? How did it look, man? It's it's sparring. <laughs> it's sparring, you know. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, let me tell you this: Golovkin in the middle of the ring, Mosley on the ropes. That's how it went. Uh, but it's sparring, uh, dude. I mean, even Mosley left a comment on the video. There's Mosley leaving a comment. Well, I'll say this about Vic's statement. Vic, I agree with you, and um, I didn't think of that. You're right. If Delvin loses this fight, I think Golden Boy could do an Angulo fight, and it'll be a good fight because it will be that Paul Wolak, Delvin Rodriguez type of fight that Angulo needs. And after that last silver fight, PDs, no PDs, he looked bad. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he probably needs a good, tough named guy like Rodriguez. If Rodriguez wins, he might get this fight because it was offered to him. Remember on our last interview, he said that they offered him the fight, but the money wasn't right. But anybody well, he said the money was right. It, it, it was his, uh, it was Who because was they gave him three weeks notice, he said. Delvin Rodriguez is offered a fight at Fredo Angulo. Uh, oh. Delvin pretty much said that he, he didn't want to go into a big fight like that with three weeks of training. And I don't blame him. I mean, Showtime type of fight, three weeks. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, he. I mean, he was right to do that. Props to that Jorge Silva kid. Looks looked damn good in that fight. Yeah, he might be on PEDs. <laughs> he's on PEDs. Oh dude. shit. <laughs> yeah, that was the rumors. You know, who knows though? I don't think PEDs help you, man. I don't... Whoa, whoa! What do you whoa. mean? I don't think they help you. I mean, boxing is all about style, so. Yeah, but if you're on performing enhancement... Hold on, hold on. The only way I can see a fighting is, let's say, Rios and Alvarado, where, where testosterone comes into the equation. That's where PDs helps, but I don't, I don't really see it helping. No, man. Listen, it helps your endurance. If you don't get tired and the other guy is getting tired, you're going to win. It yeah. Stamina. But you can just step back and then... <laughs> Power. Helps with the power, of course. Step back and what? <laughs> Step back. The dude's raging Step forward. Step back and what? Step back. Counter his ass. Do some Miranda flashy shit. Listen, if you're on PD, hey, what? you can lift more weights. If you're lifting more weights, but technically... I'm going to start I'm gonna start taking I'm gonna start taking PD so I'll get fucking strong and boxing. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to come out. I'm going to come out to Vegas. I'm going to come out to Vegas. I'm going to come out to Vegas in, in a few weeks. Freaking chiseled. Watch. I'm, I'm gonna call up a, a comment in the in I'll call the, up Marquez's conditioning coach. Yeah, man, oh, I, I don't want to go there. Me up with some uh, with something. I need a six pack before the summer, bro, and I don't want to. I know. I know. But what's on the undercard of that fight, Vic? Uh, I don't even know. I don't even think it's that good. But I'll check for you. Oh, um, you, know, you know that um, Hunter that was on the last. ESP. No, he was on the Showbox. Um, he was on the Showbox car with Demetrius Andrade. He's going. The one that beat Serrano. The one that beat Serrano. Who did I tell you he was gonna fight? He's gonna be fighting uh, somebody. What do? Serrano. Who's that? The dude from Philly that got knocked out. By who? By uh, Hunter. I don't remember this fight. It was on the last. It was on the Andrade Freddie Hernandez car. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Hey, Andrade didn't look too good. He didn't impress me. What? I swear to Jesus, he did not, he did not impress me. Wow, dude, he I expected you, more. Are you, are you kidding me? I expected more. Oh my god! Or when 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 Laura set the barometer, Laura was supposedly this 154 pound. I think Laura ices him. Isis who? Who? Uh, Andrade? Uh, Andrade, yes. Stop yes. it. Stop it. Hey, in the comments, you know what you know what to do. Back me up. <laughs> yeah, you got this new switchboard. Are you happy as hell with it, huh? I hope he's not breathing, dude, because I had to shoot him, had to bring out the big guns and the little guns. He's talking crazy. <laughs> what are you talking about? People people know what's up. Who? Man, everybody, Lara against uh, uh, Andrade, dude, that is, that's not even a fight, dude. Lara just, it's too what? much for him. It's too what? much. What? You know, oh, that, my that, God. I'm going to be honest with you and say this. That is going to be one of those type of Michael Perez versus Omar Figueroa fights for me because everybody knows I'm the biggest Lara fan there is. I'm the biggest Lara fan, too. But, man, you got, hey, you guys scorecards, you got, scorecards you got, for Vice Lara. What's ha what happened? Who was winning? What? Who was according, to, the, according, to the according to the judges, it was a draw. All right, but who do y'all think? I had Lara by a landslide. It doesn't matter who, what we think because this is what I always tell Vic. If it was a draw or it was a robbery, it means that the guy who's supposed to win didn't do enough. Who was that? Laura. Who was A side? Laura. But he got. But what's name got Freddie Roach in this corner? Oh, fuck you, what? <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> He's a star. Oh, man. Well, I, 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 got, I, I have Vanners up that round. I was there a lot. I, was, I have Vanners up. Of course you have Vanners. Of course, because you're, you're related to him. That's why, man. I know. That's your boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty much a fan of anybody that throws me fucking in. What the fuck was that? That's coming from Abu Nassim. I can't understand that Charlie Brown talk. Uh. <laughs> I'm saying I'm a fan of a person that's more aggressive. Then the person just moves. Oh, so you're Mexican. It's yeah. not Mexican. Yeah, I'm, I'm Mexican fight fan. All right. Now yeah. we understand why Vasquez lost. So they're in Mexico against Canelo because you know Canelo was the aggressor. So it's a given that you win if you're the aggressor in Mexico. Listen, I'm not Mexican, man. I just like an aggressive fighter versus the person that just moves. 
But don't get me wrong, a counter puncher that throws well, it, everybody's a fan of somebody that lands. That that fight, Laura didn't throw anything. Hey, Man, Laura was catching, boy. Just put that phone on vibrate. You keep yeah. like they're gonna not stop calling you. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, what happened? Yeah, yeah. What happened? Your parole officer calling you, man? What's yeah, on, he, he called. He he wanted me to take a piss test. All right, man. Anyways, uh, yeah, the on the card, uh, it's not it's much. Sad. It, I looked it, at it. It's it's yeah. a sad on the card, dude. I I don't even know these guys. Which which card is this? This is the ESPN Friday Night Fights card. We got Chris Howard against Bayan Jargo. I know both of these guys. Uh, I haven't seen much of them lately, but I mean, other than that. It's a Friday night fight card. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with the main event. Yeah, Just I'm happy. Box? There's no show box this week. Mm. Ain't nothing, dude. The well ran dry. Well, at the Horseshoe Casino, a fight that our writer will be live at. We're gonna get the, the out. What's going on with Mike Jimenez? He's gonna be taking a step up, going against Michael Walker. It's Jimenez. Oh no. He Jimenez. He Jimenez. Like like uh, from the Barcelona de la Mañana. But we're talking in English, so it's Jimenez. Hey, uh, what, what, what's that one dude? Is that one dude on the card, Hansel Martinez? That dude is raw. I like him. On which card? Dude? On that card, I think. Hansel Martinez. Y'all know who that is, right? No, he's not on this card. That dude is. He's not on either of the cards we're talking about. What are you talking about? Uh... Damn, I'm trying to see. He's on. I'm looking at Ring TV schedule. Man, he's, t- he's telling his parole officer online, there bro. You know, that's why you're messing up. You're looking at the wrong schedule. <laughs> Where y'all get these schedules at? How to hang up on this dude? <laughs> oh, he's on that. Uh, anyway, Lopez Romero card. Well, what I, what I want to go back to was, uh, did you guys see the UK card this weekend? Yes, I did. Which one? The Carl Frampton Kiko Martinez oh, yes, fight. Yes, yes. That was a good fight. Very good fight. So, very good. This What'd is another guy, that? Irishman, you uh, European guy. So that dude, that dude what he he was took in the what, deep what, water. What's our thing? Eurobum? What's our thing here, Ness? Eurobum? Legit? I don't, I don't think I don't think it's uh I don't think we should even test him. I mean, um rate him yet. Like Kiko Martinez? Did you see like that ball spot on his head? How old is Kiko Martinez? <laughs> Uh, I mean, the Kiko Martinez is a tough out, man. What are you talking about? I don't care, but that dude, he brought it. He he man, came to fight. You're, you're frozen, Vic. Your, your your picture hasn't moved yet. Let me tap him. It's. But yeah, um, I don't know, man. The big the big fight over there in the UK, Scott Quick, Carl Frampton. It's it's almost like a top ranked Golden Boy situation where, yeah, you know that fight might not happen because of different promoters and different uh. How many TV fights Carl, Scott Quick got though? How many fights he got? Let me give you guys some inside information here anyway. For all you guys that want to see Frampton come to the U.S. and fight Leo Santa Cruz's and Abner Mars, Nonito Donaire's, and Guillermo Rigan, it's not happening. He's going to fight the winner of Jonathan Romero versus Lopez. He's going to get the IBF championship, and then he's going to go back to the U.K. or well, that fight's probably going to be in the U.K. anyway. You live on a boxer voice. Who's this? Oh, they want to jam. Oh, it's a, it's a Valentine's Day session going on in the wraparound. Hello. Hang up, man. They just want to jam. Um, so the uh, so what he's gonna do is whether I'm sure the fight's gonna happen in UK, and he's gonna if he wins for that IBF belt, he's gonna fight Frampton. Monroe. Excuse me. Then Frampton's gonna fight Quig, uh, and that was told to me by. The one and only Eddie Hearn. You should have asked him about, you know, Box Nation and uh, Sky Sports and how's that going to work out. You know, it's kind of like an HBO Showtime type of deal over there. So yeah. You well, know, quick, quick, quick is quick is quick is bo- quick is Box Nation. You know, and Eddie Hearns and Matchroom Sports have an exclusive deal with with Sky Sports. So. And UK getting real big in the boxing scene again. Real big. Well, I mean, they, they, they've always been big, dude. They yeah, love boxing. I know. I mean, they're better they, they fans keep, they, than us. I say that all the time. Yeah, they come out more. Give me no credit for that because I say that all the time. They're, they're, they're better fans than us, dude. They they, they love boxing. It's because we're always too busy wondering about LeBron and shit. Yeah, I guess. And the fact that, um, 
you know, the fact that they like, like, they get hyped up about garbage fighters shows you how much they like boxing. Uh, yeah, we need to go there and fight over there too, but I don't know. What do you think about us Americans going to fight them? I want to see Ward go over there. I want to see Ward win. Let's touch on that. In the UK, why not? He's going to make more money. He, he's never going to be a pay-per-view star no matter what. Um, you can fight Chavez Jr. Who, Ward? Yeah, and he could... They're, I not, mean. Gonna do that. They're not gonna do that. Listen, Chavez is not gonna fight Ward. He's not gonna fight Golovkin. He's not even gonna fight Peter Quillen. Chavez, who, who would they match Chavez up with? Kelly Paddock's the only person I thought was good, and that's it. He retired, so yeah. I know he needs a tune-up by June before he fights in September. Well, I heard from the beginning of like last year they said it was Matt Macklin probably in Houston, but. Matt Macklin's over here talking about Andy Lee, talking about this and that. I like I like Macklin. I like that fight for Chavez, but he wins it. Easy. And that's good. That's good, though. Right. I mean, why, why not? I like I Chavez, like- man. Ch- Chavez is a, is a character, man. He's an exciting fighter. Uh, whether you know you 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 don't you you wail him or you dog him because of his because uh, of who he, he is in training or because of who he is. I, mean, I, like I like him. He's a ticket seller for damn sure. Knew that he's gonna go to Robert Garcia. That's that's confirmed. No, I said they're the... talking about a Rubio rematch, right? What? Oh, Which God, I don't want to see. Ethan, where are you getting those information from, man? Box, stop stop talking to your parole officer, man. Oh. Where'd you stop get talking to parole from? officer, dude? Come on, man. Your <laughs> parole officer don't know boxing, man. Stop that shit. Rubio rematch. I don't want to see that. I, really Come on, I don't want to see it either. It's on Come boxing on, scene. Well, maybe Rubio wants the rematch, dude. I'm yeah, sure. I know. I don't want to. <laughs> All right. I do. Sure. I'm, Ru- I'm Rubio. I want the rematch too. I want to get back on HBO. What's up? Where you seen that at? Boxing scene. That's that's the only word. Where? Boxing scene. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone someone handed Ness a new soundboard, and he's going crazy yeah. with it. Man, I don't know. He's looking for opportunities. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I gotta get faster. I gotta be like a wild, wild west dude later on. Just pull it out your head. Just oh, oh, I gotta get it on point, man. I gotta get it this on point. The, this is just a funny Valentine's Day type of show of the boxing boys because I know most people is probably with their honeys. I'm with yeah, my honey boxing. I missed it, dude. I'm, especially since I had this new no Sunday. Nah, we didn't do last Sunday, man. Uh, I was sick. Vic was tied up, right? You were tied up. Well. Oh yeah, I was tied up, and then Lamont Peterson canceled on us. Uh, Pavlik didn't pick up the phone. It, it oh just, yeah, I, I was gonna ask you when you gonna interview Pavlik too. It got ugly, man. It got ugly. Things didn't work out the way they should have. But let's stay. Know, Matt Mario didn't show up. I mean, it was all it was a mess. Mario, I don't. I haven't seen Mario in forever, man. Mario, I don't know. Do I got? I got lost in the snow or something. Somewhere. The snows in Texas. Oh, I thought he was on the East Coast with y'all. Nah, bro, he's, he's, your, he's your neighbor. <laughs> he's my neighbor? Yeah, man. Zimmerman as a neighbor? Where my pro officer at? Corpus. Oh. Um, Ashita, Vic, when's that happening? March March, March 30th. Is Against who? New York? Nah, that's going to be in France, dude. Uh, he's not even French. I mean, the Golovkin, I don't know why they do that. Because there's Europeans, they love boxing. It's gonna be in Monaco. It's gonna be paired with that uh, four man super oh, middleweight yeah, yeah, tournament. Yeah, super middleweight tournament. Oh, he filled me in. No, I don't, uh, for, the, for the life of me, I don't understand why Delvin Rodriguez entered that thing. He's in it. Yes, because well, his money, dude. Is, is he, he gonna get the Comanche boy? Yeah, but you're gonna win a million. Edwin dollars. Rodriguez, you said you said Delvin. It's Edwin, dude. Oh, Kill him. <laughs> you're gonna win a million dollars for 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 two fights, though. Yeah, and what, what was what was he making fighting on undercards or fighting on HBO boxing after dark and all that other stuff? What do you think he made for that for that uh, Escalera fight? I don't think he made. I, you I, know, bet, I, I bet it won five. I bet it won five five uh, large. I don't think it's even close to that. No. I would not see him. How much you think he made for that um, Jason Escalera fight? Oh. Uh, Edwin Rodriguez. Edwin Rodriguez. How much you? Five, who, somebody said half a million. No way. No, 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 way. no. How much? Nah, I do. Hey, that's that's, what, that's what we're saying. Do. He didn't make that. Oh, I don't. I don't know, but I, I guarantee maybe. I I don't know, but probably low, like maybe seventy-five to hundred thousand. Not that much. 
All right, so well, who is in it? You know why I'm worried? Because of Gravich. Ed, Ed Edwin Rodriguez. Edwin Rodriguez is not the best boxer in the world. Even though he may act like it and he throws a bunch of jabs, he still gets hit with the overhand right a lot. And Gravich. Donovan George tagged his ass a lot. But... Exactly, and so did Escalera. Escalera hit him with one good one. Remember, Vic? And yeah, what I'm trying to remember that fight. What's happening if that's Gravich, a dude that's a natural 175-pounder? Granted, this whole thing is set up for Edwin to win because the main event is going to be at a catch weight of 172, right? All right, so who all in this? Who all's in this? I didn't, I uh, Gra- Gravich is in it. Dub, uh, Edwin Rodriguez in it. Uh, Zoltar dies in it, and there's one more person in it. Voice. Who's this? Yeah, it's me, uh, pound for pound, Vic, Chico. Chico, what's up, man? Oh, what's special up, appearance. Special appearance for my boy. Now we got two Vicks on the show. What's up, man? Nah, man. We tell t- me, brother. Uh, we're talking that super middleweight, tw- uh, super middleweight slash light heavyweight catch weight <laughs> happening in Monaco. Winner takes all for a million dollars with Edwin Rodriguez. Don't tell Ward about it. Gravich <laughs> and uh, who else is in there, Vic? It's like two dudes I never heard of. Nah, Zo Zo or dies in it. Uh, and there's uh, Argentina. Then, There's someone else. That's the Argentinian guy. He's, I don't know. I, I look him up, man. Time outside of Argentina, right? Yeah. Damn, I, I, I know Edwin can use the money, son. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for real, I think. Yeah, uh, hey, Vic, pound for pound, yo. Vic, that is. Um, how much you think Edwin made for the Escalera fight? Uh, shit. I don't know. Maybe 60000 70000 I don't know. Yeah. I mean. It was I was there that night, but I, I don't know how much they gave him for that. I know I don't think it was even a hundred thousand to be honest. No, it makes sense because Danny Garcia made one seventy five versus um, Morales, and those are at least two names. So I yeah, I just don't know. You don't think that this is a little, I don't know, a little too much for Edwin to get into this tournament with two big punchers because. Uh, that guy, Vic, pronounce that last name with the Z. Gravich. No, no. Zolt. Zolt. Zolt or die. He's a big puncher too, right? Oh, he was going to fight Cloud. That's a big puncher too. Then you got Gravich, which is a definitely a big well, you know, Yeah, Zolt, Zolt was supposed to fight Cloud. Zolt was also supposed to fight Chalemba on, on that same undercard. He hurt that dude. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I don't know what he's doing in there. I mean, he went from a... Uh, guy like Escalera who's like a heavy bag to that tournament. I, Man, I don't know. I mean, he, he wanted Pavlik. You know what I mean? That's what we wanted, but Pavlik retired, so I don't know. I guess he went to where the money is. What is it, like hey, a million for if you win the tournament or something like that? Yeah, a million. Yeah, I mean, shit, he's doing it for the money. Can't hey, fucking I, blame him, but... I, I bet Ward is just sitting by the phone like, hey, I'll, I'll go in there. I'll fight. <laughs> Uh, Ward is sitting by no phone. Ward is Ward has got a messed up shoulder till at least September, October. Wait, one handed, he was still whooping dudes. Nah, he's good, oh, but he ain't that good. <laughs> yeah. Hey Vic, so uh, we were talking also Delvin Rodriguez versus Comanche Boy to uh, Friday tomorrow night on ESPN. What do you think is gonna happen in that, man? I think Comanche Boy is gonna stop him, bro. Damn, everybody's picking uh, Comanche uh, Boy. Uh, uh, you seen that boy? I mean, yeah, that's a pretty yeah. big boy. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think he goes in there and stops him in like eight or nine, to be honest. I don't know. I think I think Delvin is after this. He should maybe hang him up. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Damn! Wow. You guys are rough. Same shit, man. Vic and Vic tells me now nah, he should get the uh, the uh, Alfredo Angulo fight. Uh, I mean, Angulo, man. I mean, they could do it just to give Angulo a little bit more of an ego because he looked like shit in his last fight too. I mean, I mean, they said the guy was on PED, but I don't, I don't fucking know. But I mean, Angulo. I mean, I think they're just building him up so Can- Canelo can wipe him out, and we can finally say Canelo beat a legit 154 pounder. Oh, and that's a legit 154 pounder. Yeah, I mean, Angulo's compared to who he's been fighting, blown up lightweights. Yeah, that's a legit 154 pounder. No, no, I mean, regardless though. Regardless, Vic, he is a natural 154 pounder. He's been fighting at 154 since we've seen him. Everybody. Yeah, that's what. And and, that's and, what I mean. and even though he looked bad in the silver fight, you gotta remember he 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 fought Centron. He did lose that fight, but 
He fought Cintron, Joe Green, Harry O'Yorgi, um, Kirkland. Kirkland. You know, he he's a natural 154 pounder. I think Kirkland took something out of him, though. No, I think yeah. Jail took something out of him, man. Who? Depression, jail. Who's Jail? <laughs> jail. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Jail? Like okay, like like, like uh, immigration. I, I see. Oh, I thought you said <laughs> jail. Your East Coast accent was fucking with me. Like jail. Like, <laughs> yeah. He was in there for what, like eight months, some Almost shit like that. Seven he was months. in there for a while. He grew his seven hair out months. in there. He was in there seven months. Not only that, you got to think about it like this, dude. I don't know if anybody's ever been to jail, but you can only imagine. You see plenty of movies, and this is what happens. He didn't know if he was getting out because he wasn't in regular jail. Like he was INS, man. You know, he was ICE. Yeah. So he, he not only was he in jail with no bail, no you know possible date of release, but he also had deportation hung over his head. So he didn't even know if he was going to be able to come back to the United States and continue to provide for his family. So. All that stress mixed in with seven months of jailhouse food, blowing up in weight. Not only that, he said it clearly on his interview with us that the warden didn't let him throw a punch and treated him really bad. So didn't he, let him shadow box? Nah, no shadow box. And he was only able to, I think he said run, right, Vic? And run and push ups, probably. Yeah, I think that's all he said. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't able to do any boxing related activities. Nothing. Um, hey guys, when, when you're in ICE, when you're with immigration, the longest they can keep, they can keep you is a year and a day. They gotta that's do that's probably what he did. <laughs> when you're back a year. I was saying, how you know, man? You been there? Man, come on, man. I was saying, you been in there before? Know all that information, man. I, got <laughs> I, I watch National Geographic, son. <laughs> he didn't make it to a year and a day, but seven months is a long time, dude. Six months is 180 days, so that was 150 days, dog. That's a lot, dude. No, excuse me. Six months is 180 days, so that was 200 and 210 days. That's a lot. Ten days. He was in the best workout facility in the world. <laughs> but next, next, uh, who do you think is the Delta fight? Angulo, who do you think takes it? Oh, I'm going Angulo because, um, again, same reason I'm going uh, Comanche. The true natural 154-pounder is Angulo. The true puncher is Angulo. Whether or not he looked bad in the silver fight, he's still the power puncher. Delvin, who Delvin knocked out? When's the last time? <laughs> when's the last well, time well, he knocked out? Well, 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 right? Didn't he stop him or that went to uh, Not even the uh, rematch. Decision. It was both times uh, decision. Delvin ain't I know. Uh, Delvin yeah, ain't I, stopping I, a car. I know. Uh, Delvin and Austin, Austin Trout knocked me out last year, though. <laughs> I was. I, I tell you, it knocked you. Yeah. You ain't lying. It was a lot of people, uh, you know. <laughs> Yo, for, dude, you're a switchboard gangster, man. You, you you got two names, the box rock gangster and now the switchboard gangster. Oh, Vic, stop crying. Yeah. What the baby's going to do? Oh, come on. Oh, my God. Yeah, man. I can't. I can't. With you, hey Vic. Uh, I, I I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but you ain't going to that fight on March second. I know. I know you want. Oh to yeah, that. man. I, I just got a. I just saw it on Twitter. Actually, they moving it to Vegas, right? Yeah. I know. I know. You know, we're supposed to go up there, have some drinks, and chill. But how much is the fight to Vegas? Let me look. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, I was gonna go to Vegas, but work fucked that up. So no Vegas for me. Brandon Real Alvarado too is on TV for me. Oh, uh, well, hopefully, we hopefully we get uh, Donaire and Ricky down at in New York. Yeah, I'd go to that. Yeah, I think it is. I think they said Radio City, man, and uh, that's many... gonna be a weird setup, dude. I, I don't like Radio City for Boston. I'm... Yo, let me throw this in there. I saw on Twitter WBC considering ordering Canelo versus Lara fight. <laughs> man, yeah, I love then... that. I'm the biggest yeah, Laura fan. Even though, even though Laura's gonna lose, oh, it's it's eight fifteen. Where's my guest at? I'm supposed to be in here. Uh, he's probably hanging out with uh, Ephraim's fucking parole officer in the back. <laughs> Where, where'd you get that from? That's what I'm trying to figure man. out. <laughs> Listen, man, it's, it's Valentine's Day. I'm doing a boxing show. Yeah, we're going off this. We're, we're, we're going non-scripted today. No format. No so who is, who is like who is the guest? <laughs> Who is the guest? Uh, Javier. Ness, Ness, 
That's his cousin. Hey, hey, remember that? Remember that Canadian dude that was gonna be on the radio show? Playing on ESP. <laughs> the dude from Fort Worth knocked him out. Yeah, that's uh, Fort Worth. What are you talking about? Uh, you talking about Tony Lewis? Tony, Tony Lewis got Lewis. knocked out by uh. Oh, yeah, Tony Lewis. Yeah, yeah, my boy. I didn't know he was from Fort Worth too. And then I, I've heard the name around here. Uh, locally, Man. I've heard the name. Yo, we was excited though. You don't, man. Even, know your, you, you don't, even, you don't even know your own fighter, is it? Come on, man. Man, we know El Loco Hernandez. We support him. Vic, you're frozen. What's his first name? Jose Loco or some shit. What's his first name? Jose oh, El Loco. You know, man. Yeah, that's I'm banning your Fort. I'm ban. I'm banning your Fort Worth, Texas car, bro. I'm banning right. your Fort Worth, Texas car. What's up uh, with your screen? <laughs> your shit is frozen, dude. Mm. Vic needs to uh, connect to the internet. I keep telling him that. I'm going to buy Vic a... a, a oh, hey, I got a webcam if you want it. I'm going to buy him a new Ethernet cable. Dude, you know I bought oh, a... Man, I'm, a I'm a wireless. Yeah, but that's the thing. That's why you keep freezing. I bought a 75-foot Ethernet cable. Guess how much? $10 off eBay. $8 off Amazon. I never, I never could understand how to check out on Amazon. It's hard as hell. <laughs> Ephraim, something's wrong with you if you can, you can check out on Amazon. eBay's easier, dude. No, all, all internet stores have a checkout sign. I, I don't know how to check out. I don't... <laughs> Yo, Ephraim, man. Wow. Wow. Yo, check the comments on YouTube, Vic. I'm going to check Twitter because I've seen a lot. Yeah, I don't know how to do that either. So, Someone says... Someone said Ephraim needs to go check in with parole officer. Yeah. Yo, go do that, man. I'm going to get you a new hat, too. Is it not your Vika fight on the HBO? Yeah, it's going to be. Uh, yeah, it, it, I, I, I really, I, I don't like that, man. I don't like that at all, dude. I want to see Escobedo I, I yeah. and Cherry. Yeah, I think they should move that fight up. I think that fight's going to be more exciting. It's going to be more competitive. Uh, I think it hasn't, I don't know, man. You know, we couldn't we can get Banks and uh, Mitchell because of the injury. At least add something exciting to this Who's mismatch. Who was injured? Who was injured? Uh, Banks injured his thumb. Oh, his thumb. Banks. Hey, Vic. Yeah. Yo. Is your wife using the Wi-Fi with you or something? She on an iPad You're usually not this bad, dude. No, you're usually not this bad, but you're, like, freezing up. I got to tap on the damn glass to make you unfrozen. <laughs> dude, there's no one using the internet here but me, dude. My bad. Hey, my connection. Hey, y'all on the East Coast. There's a lot of people in the East Coast. Y'all be stealing each other's Wi-Fi and shit. Maybe someone's stealing my my internet, dude. What do you want me to do? I don't better know. security. Move bad, man. Bossy lady says that if Broner plays with Reese, it's gonna go longer rounds. But I see him stopping him in, in about four. If he's nah, I think I think I agree with that. I think it, it stops like six or seven. I think Broner takes I'm his time being his opponent. I'm I'm, th I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Reese is gonna come in with a spirited effort. Just come in like bum rushing. But dude comes in with his hands down too. But I mean, the dude ain't got too much of a jab. I ain't gonna lie. But I mean, he looks like he don't come to lay down. That's gonna get laid down. Yeah, fine. I know. It's gonna be a mandatory lay down. But <laughs> I just don't see him Buffalo, doing it. Buffalo Breeze. Where's Where's Buffalo Breeze from? I mean, Buffalo Town. He's from, from Philly. Philly. From, he's Philly. from Philly. And he's going for Burns. He said Burns is going to get past Vasquez. I, that's not happening. Dude. That's not happening. <laughs> what? Why don't you see that not happening? The, the fight's in the UK. Uh, oh, I don't, I, don't, I don't think Puppet can knock Burns out. It's going to be an ugly fight. Who do you think they're going to give that on the cards to? I don't know. But Yo, the Puppet you, Master is going to take Vasquez, him to school. Vasquez, listen, he... He had a close fight with what was that Quintero, right? Hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. Is this how this how you shut up, shut him up? He went twice with Alvarez. Oh my God! You can't stand that. You the only one think Alvarez is good. <laughs> what? Yo, for real? Why do you keep bringing out Canelo, dude? What the I'm just saying he went twice dude, with him. This dude ain't fighting no time soon. Why are we talking about this guy, man? Come on. <laughs> Listen, um, so uh, we got some more comments. Hold on. Todo por el tí says he wants Broner versus Vasquez because Broner's stance is wide, and he wants to see how Broner can adapt to the movement. He won't. That's not going to happen. And, and that fight won't happen. What? Broner-Vasquez? Hey, does uh, Burns got some kind of belt? 
Yeah, he's WBA. Yeah. And then the Vasquez got a title too, right? IBF. IBF. Where you been at, dude? You in the... Yeah, I'm, I'm just you, you watch boxing? You, you watch boxing? I'm confirming, you, you I'm confirming nah, I'm, now. I'm telling you, yo, I think he, I think he just got locked up. His parole <laughs> officer back there, man. I'm over here next to, next to Angulo. Yeah, you using ICE. Well, how come you ain't grow a beard and freaking hair like that? And looking like the Geico bum. Man, wait, got some more comments. Hold on. Vic, nothing on YouTube? Yeah, I'm telling you. Um, nah. Um, someone said An Angulo has beaten Rosado too, and he's also a natural 154 pounder. And then someone asked that Bucky baby said, "Who do you think will become a champion out of these three names? Frankie Gomez, Jose Benavides, or Joel Diaz Jr.?" I like Benavides. Oh, you know what I'm gonna say, Joel. You're gonna D say Joel Diaz Jr. <laughs> But, but I am also going to say Benavidez is well. Benavidez. I think Frankie Gomez is going to get exposed, dude. It's only a matter of time. Did anyone Whoa. see that Lenar Lane fight? This dude was like... He was wild. All he would do is like... <laughs> yo, with his hands down. He was like a bull in there. Somebody's going to be the bullfighter and counterpunch the shit out of that dude. Fuck. Hey, the dude could. I don't know. I, I liked him. I liked him. All right. When, hey, well, we almost saw uh, Benavidez get exposed. Vic. Yeah. Mr. Salazar. Yo. He's at I'm hearing you. Right? I can't hear you, dude. All right. We got our guest. Javier, what's up, man? Oh, we can't hear you. Check that mute button at the top right. It's, it should be red. Right here? Yeah, we hear you now. All right, how you guys doing? We're good, man. What's right, up, what's up man? man? It took uh, a while to get on here. You couldn't figure it out? Uh, no, I was waiting for the invite. It just didn't show up. I don't know what's up with the computer. I've been here since 5.50. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn, that's... Damn. No, 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 no. Hey, he's talking 5.50 his time, Vic. He's in Arizona. I know, I know. That's like a half hour, dude. Yeah, but uh, I sent it as soon as I started it. Like I, I told this. Anyway, whatever. I'm here. <laughs> so, uh, we're glad to have you on, man. How you doing? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Getting ready, you know. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for having me on your show, first of all. Oh no, but, uh, the pleasure's all ours. I'm sorry. I said the pleasure's all ours. Oh, okay, thank you. So, uh, no, just sorry. Go ahead. Go okay, ahead. Go ahead. No, I'll just say, uh, just getting ready for the fight. Where you know, the last week of preparation, speaking out and just getting ready. Javier, tilt your camera down just a bit. Because, uh, whenever you move in, yeah, it chops your head off. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it. Um, I want to ask you, uh, how has it been for you? I mean, I, I was doing some research, and, and what I see is that. First of all, let, let's start off this way, Matt, better. Do you have an advisor in your corner? Uh, an advisor do, to take my fights, or what do you mean? Yeah, to pick your fights, to guide your career. No, no, I don't. I just, I've been flowing around with different teams. Um, I had a manager, but uh, it hasn't worked out. So we're with a new team now. So we'll see what, you know. We're just taking hard fights because we need to get to the top, basically. That's where we're at. And that's exactly where I was headed. You don't you don't really see a guy, you know, with seven fights being put in this tough. Um even before your seventh fight with Jose Benavides Jr., which was a big fight for you at that time. I mean, you were six and zero, and he was like fourteen and zero, I think, at the time. And everyone knows his amateur background and things of that nature. His also his height, but before that, you also fought two undefeated guys. We we just don't see that, you know, in boxing. And when we do, it's usually because the guy's pedigree. Is, is long. I mean, I know you have an extensive amateur background yourself. You have 82 uh, fights, I believe, right? Uh, about, yeah. So, but normally you see that when a guy's got like 130 plus fights or 200 fights, that they believe in his skill set so much that they're putting him in very early, very soon with undefeated fighters. So how has that been for you? I mean, I know you're a fighter, so this is what you want to do. It doesn't matter 
your opponent and their record, but thinking back on it now, do you feel that maybe your career could have been guided a little bit better? I think it could have, but for the reason that I came back to turn pro at 23, I wanted to catch someone's attention. So I said, the bigger the risk, the better the outcome. You know, hopefully someone take a look at me and want to sign me, but it hasn't happened yet. So, yeah, and that clearly segues me into my next question because it's something that I read that you said about a year ago, I believe, and it and it stuck out to me. It caught my attention, and your quote is. Uh, you said, uh, duh, 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 duh. fighting people with bad or no records is not good for my ranking. They say big risk equals big rewards, so that's what I'm striving for, just trying to catch somebody's eye and get that contract. And I believe you've done that. While you didn't win the biggest fight of your career till date, which was with the Jose Benavides Jr., I think that your true grit and overall badassness man has showed that i mean like i said being put in tough so early you know for everybody listening out there this is a guy with seven fights only one loss and his only loss comes to jose benavides jr who's just kind of a freak of nature vic isn't he six feet at 130 that dude's big we've had him on he's, the- a big, he's a big kid he's a big kid. He's a big kid and he's got an extensive amateur background you know He's being guided by top rank, and, uh, you know, they put you in there clearly because you had the undefeated record, but I felt it was a bad fight for you. How how was that fight? Take us back to that fight because I know that's your only loss and your only stoppage. Uh, well, I took the fight short notice. Uh, one reason, a lot of people don't want to fight me for the same reason, the the punching power, I guess, the record, the, I was 6-0, five knockouts. Um so we took the fight because, you know, bills got to get paid and family gets to get fed. So, but overall, the fight was, um, I was ready to fight, but I wasn't ready to fight Benavides. Not at that level, not yet. But we had to do what we had to do. And what exactly did you take out of that loss? Like, what experience do you feel you gained? Be smarter with my fight, not be so aggressive. I was trying to, obviously, if you saw the fight, I was trying to be the aggressor, trying to catch, not looking for the knockout, but catch a good shot and go follow up. Um, so just be more more patient for my fight, and just if the knockout comes, it's going to come. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, you're going in tough again. Yes. Once again, you know, uh, the facts are that you're, less experienced than your opponent in terms of paper. You know what I mean? He's got 15 wins, no losses. You only have seven fights. While I think it's a bit different, though, I think that you have the edge because no one on his resume tops a Jose Benavides Jr. I mean, he's got Mike Arnudis on there, but at the end of the day, Mike Arnudis, I don't even know, Vic, would you consider him a veteran, a gatekeeper? What, what could you really label Mike Arnudis? So, I mean, he falls in he falls in that gatekeeper slash veteran type of fighter right now. Exactly. So I think that Javier, having faced the Benavides Jr., while he didn't pull away with the win, he might have got the experience necessary to get him past this fight. Now I'm not even gonna begin to try and pronounce this guy's first name, but I know his last name is Kinda. So, what do you know about him? As a fighter, I mean, have you seen any tape? And, uh, you know, how are you looking to come into this fight? Um, to what I've seen, he's a volume puncher. Not too much pop, but very volume, very active. So, you know, just try to be smart and um, catch on why he's slipping, basically. That's go to the body. My, I love going to the body and, you know, just give him hell. Been getting ready for that, so ready to go to the war. Now... Another thing also is the fact that you're, you're not afraid to travel. While up until this point, there's only been um, two fights outside of Arizona. Clearly, the third fight was in uh, Las Vegas, but neither you or uh, Benavides were the hometown guy there. But this fight, you're also leaving AR again. You're coming all the way over here to my side of town, you know, New York City. So what makes you just 
jump on a plane like that and go into, I guess, the lion's den, enemy territory, where you know you're going to have to do so much just to get a decision. It's an adventure, man. It's boxing. I, I see my career as an adventure. If me and my team, we're just get on the saddle and go. It's it's something new, something experience. You know, going to New York. Never been to New York. Been to Chicago. Been to California. Been to Vegas. Love to go to New York. It'd be be nice. And you know, the crowd. They're gonna love me or they're gonna hate me once I start fighting. You know, that's that's how it, that's how it is. Now, how do you how do you block them? out because I mean clearly you've done it before you've been in the lines then like I said enemy territory how do you put your focus only on the opponent and I guess cast out the cheering fans or you know the screams and the yells for your opponent you just focus on your fighter just you and him at the at the end of the day is just you and him and that on uh, that 16 by 16 whatever the size of the ring is going to be and that's it you hear them, but just you keep doing what you're doing. You know you're connecting your punches, and if you see what they're hurting, and just go for it, man. You just feed. Sometimes you could feed from the energy from the crowd too. You know, you put them on a good punch. The crowd, they like to see blood. So no matter if it's your blood or the other guy's blood, they're gonna they're gonna love it. Absolutely, you're not lying about that. The fans do love some blood. So let me ask you now, this fight's taking place in New York City. It's going to be in Huffington, New York. Um, I was just there last week for the Andrade fight. That's where that show box uh, with Demetrius Andrade and Freddie Hernandez was held. It's a pretty good venue. A lot of seats. Uh, not a bad seat in the house. So anybody out there that, you know, wants to see Javier fight, definitely take a look at, at those ticket sales because uh, they're not going to be expensive either. Every seat is good in the house. But... Javier, let me ask you, when are you coming to New York City to get acclimated to the climate? Because it's cold over here, brother. We just had a winter storm about two days ago. It was like, I don't know, 15 inches of snow. Man, that's a lot of snow. I was hope I'm always, I'm hoping that doesn't the flight doesn't get canceled. You guys get another storm because it's gonna, you know, it's gonna suck. But uh, I fly out I fly out Thursday, Thursday morning, so I get there I would say around four or five in the afternoon. And planning to go on a run so I could get uh, used to the wind out there, you know, get my air out there. So you're flying in Thursday of next week? Yes. But the fight is... Saturday. Man, you think that's enough time, dude? First of all, it's a two-hour time difference and the weather. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I hope so, man, because uh, Gennady Golovkin came from California to New York with only a week, I believe, and, and he caught the flu. You got to be careful with that, with that change of climate, man. Arizona is hot and dry out there, right? Yeah, but it's been cold these last couple of days. We got some rain yesterday, and it's gone down to 30. I'm pretty sure New York is way lower than that, but it's gone down to 30. So it's gone pretty cold, and I, I run, what is that you say? Um, snow, shine, or rain, I run. Yeah, rain, um, snow. <laughs> rain, cedar, hair, rain, cedar, hair. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, I mean, look, you know, I'm no trainer, I'm no strength and conditioning coach, but I definitely recommend when you land either in JFK or Kennedy Airport, uh, no, that's the same airport, JFK or LaGuardia, you bundle up, dude. Don't be afraid to put on a scarf because the last thing you want to do is go into the ring, um, you know, sweating or, you know, having a cold on you. But uh, I'm going to pass you off to my co-host, Victor Salazar. That's all my questions for now. Vic, go ahead. Hey, Javier, how you doing, man? Um, up, obviously, Vic? I'm doing all right. Uh, can you speak on the Arizona boxing scene? It's it seeming like it, it's becoming a hotbed for, for solid prospects and soon to be, you know, good contenders. Yeah, it's good. It's coming along. Um, I wish I could get in there more often, but, you know, they barely started doing the six-round shows now. Um, but uh, there are some contenders here, and I think I'm one of them. I like to think I'm one of them. Um, but it's growing. It's definitely growing. Um, so, I don't know. What else do you want to know? No, I mean, it just seems like, you know, you have Jose Benavides, you have yourself. That you know, it's becoming a hotspot. You know, the hotspots for boxing. You know, California. You know, Texas. But it, it might be you guys are creating a little niche out there in Arizona right now. 
Yeah. Um, and even even now, um, yeah. Well, now now we're I'm training on the at the gym where Venavias I believe he's gonna go train at Power MMA. One of my sponsors, a uh, good gym, beautiful gym. I'm training under Carlos Alvarez and Johnny C, um, which Carlos is uh, Benavides Senior's second. Um, so we're getting together. So it's gonna be gonna get. We hopefully you know we'll get to work together and get stronger together. We'll see what happens. So, so even after that fight you guys had, you guys gonna go in there, mix it up, do a little sparring? Yeah, absolutely, man. I. You know, a fight is a fight. But I knew him before the fight, and I know him after. And I ain't got nothing against him. It's, it's a, a career. You have to do what you got to do. Now, obviously, you're coming here on the 23rd. It's, uh, I believe, it's an NBC uh, fight night card in the Paramount Theater. Uh, do you know if your card's gonna be televised? Is it a swing bout? Like, tell us about your your, your fight with uh, Kinda. I have no idea, man. I just know I'm a fight. Supposedly, um, the, the matchmaker that got me the fight, uh, I think his name's Al Capone. He said um, it wasn't going to be televised, but you know how that is when it's a swing battle or there's airtime, then it might be televised. Might not. It might not. Well, main events actually did a thing called uh, Future Stars on NBC Fight Night, uh, where they basically air the undercards that weren't televised, I don't know if it's like a week or two later or a month later. So maybe, I mean, for your fans uh, th that, you know, are going with, that want to see you or, you know, for Arizona's sakes, that might air down the road because I know they showed a card last week that was an undercard to uh, one of their fight nights. It's called Future Stars. So that may that may be a good thing even if you don't get on the card, on the, the live card. Yeah, that would be great, man. Any airtime is a great time. That would be nice. Now, you know, you've jumped up and down in weight. What, what's your ideal weight right now? 140. I'm 140? Yes. 135, my lowest. I've gone to 145. So 140, I feel comfortable. I love the weight. I think I'm a big 140 personally. Um, but that's my ideal weight. Now, obviously, we're still at, you know, a young age in your boxing career. Obviously, you're... You're 27, but where do you see yourself, you know, t rounding out at? A welterweight at 154, or are you think you're going to stay at 140? Uh, I think I'm, well, I'm 27, you know, I think I'm thinking enough. I think I'll probably stay at 140, 140, junior welter. If anything, you know, if we God wills it and we make a, you know, we get a title fight later down the road, maybe go, um, what was it, lightweight, 130, below 140, 139? 135, 135. 35. I've hit 135 before. I can do it again, man. All I need is time. And now, Ness, Ness touched on this, uh, you know, getting here on a Thursday. Um, I mean, what precautions are you taking? Because he, he mentioned that Gennady Golovkin, he came here and it's been heralded that he got the flu uh, when he got here. And that was in January. And February is still a pretty cold month down here in New York, New Jersey area. I don't know. That's you guys actually brought that to my attention. I didn't. I saw that there was a storm, so I don't know. I'm gonna take some precautions. I don't know. Uh, wear a little mask so I don't get you know catch no virus at the airport. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> wear a bandana. I don't know. Get extra like pile up on sweaters. Bring a poncho. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do what I have to do. That was epic. I had a poncho. <laughs> No, I mean, that's good. At least you came out here and got a little informed, man, because you don't want to go in probably the biggest fight of your life right now in your career and you get sick. Yeah, yeah, God. So at least at least we did our part when you came out here, you know, give, giving you a little East Coast weather. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I knocked my foot on that one. I'm going to get sick. <laughs> you know what, Vic? Um, I mean, uh, Javier, Vic said something very, very important, too. It is the biggest fight of your career, and I'm going to tell you why, because uh, we deal with main events a lot. We go to a lot of their events and things like that, and they're known for giving a fighter another opportunity, especially if he looks good. So don't be surprised if you knock off this 15 fighter and they bring you back, because they, I mean, all you have to do is check the fact sheet from all last year. They've done it with Gabriel Rosado. And look at where Gabriel Rosado got this year. He was on HBO fighting Gennady Golovkin. He wasn't ever signed to main events. 
You know, it was a fight by fight, everything that he did. So they're good people, man. They're definitely good people. And if you do a good job, you're definitely going to be back. Well, I'm training hard for it. So I'm hopefully put a good show. Yeah, and, 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 is that is that on your end? Is that your your daughter maybe? No, it wasn't me. No? Who's got the kid? Vic, you got the kid over there? Yeah, I got like six kids here, man. Oh. No. Nah, dude, I got no one here. <laughs> oh. oh, so it is Javier. <laughs> okay. uh, no, it wasn't. My, both my boys are asleep. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're just in the living room. Oh. Let me find out. The... All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Vic. I don't know. Ephraim, Ephraim got some kids in his house or something. No, nah, I mean, and uh, t touching on Nestor's point, I mean, you, you said you don't have an advisor. Are you signed to anyone? No, I'm not. I'm not signed to anybody. I'm a free agent. You're a free agent. So how did this fight come about? I mean, how, how did it take place? Tell us how you, you're going to end up in our backyard, New York, on February 23rd. Well, you know what? I had, I don't know if you guys had heard I retired after my Benavides fight. Not because of the Benavides fight, because after that fight, you know, I was 7-1, and one, six knockouts. You know, I thought it was going to be easier for me to get fights. But in the road, I had four different fights fall through in four months. And I was like, ah, this is this is bullshit. You know, I'm getting ready for a fight. And they call me a week later. They're like, oh, it's not it's not going to go through. The guy hurt his hand. Or, oh, the guy hurt his ribs. And I'm like, ah, screw boxing. You know, not, it's not. Uh, I'm giving time for my family. I love the sport. That's the only thing, know, the thing I know how to do, box. I've been doing it since I was 12. I got really frustrated and um, I get a call. I get a call. No, well, I start going to the gym and work out. After a couple of weeks, I start sparring and I get that itch again. And then I get a call from uh, Capone and I just, they tell me what time. He, they gave me six weeks. I was already about maybe a month in training, sparring, you know, just, just I wasn't thinking of I was going to go back to it. But the opportunity came and I just said, let's do it. Let's go. They got six weeks of preparation. I can start my camp, and we've been going at it strong. So that's how it came about. And I just want to touch on that, you know, brief retirement because, you know, guys at the higher level, you know, always retire, and then they get the itch to come back, and they never want to quit. Um, you never made it to that level, and you're hoping to get to that level. How difficult is it for you to get back into that boxing mentality, being that you're 27 and you have about eight fights in? I mean – Tell us about the transition from unretiring to retiring. Well, you know, it didn't really sink in. It really didn't sink in because it was so short. So I was like, I tried, like I said, I tried to go lift some weights. It wasn't what I did. I tried for the week, went back to the gym, and I felt like I was the same. Just, you know, I was just taking a little break. That's what I felt like. So my fight mentality is there 110%. I never left. So, you know, how, this, this is opportunity. How short, how short was that break? Uh, I think it was a month. A month. All right. I mean, some boxers retire one day and then two days later they're <laughs> they're back at it. Um. Now, obviously, you know you love boxing. Um, and you fought eight times. What do you do aside from boxing? Like, do you have another career? I'm a stay-at-home dad. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Stay-at-home dad. Uh, you got sugar mama? No, I you know, I got I got lucky. I got a beautiful <laughs> wife. She's smart. She's you know, I've been married for going on four years now. We just we have two kids. I just had a newborn on uh, last Wednesday. Uh, but she whatever I make on the side with boxing and you know, the beginning fights is not too much money, but it holds off and what she makes, we we're off pretty good. Then I cut hair on the side. So that's that's what I do. Oh cool. I need a haircut right now, man. I don't want to show everyone. Yeah, I'm looking kind of, I'm looking kind of scruffy right now. <laughs> I'm getting low taper. Let me ask you, th this is not your first time taking a, uh, a break from boxing, though, right? I, I took it when I was young. When, yeah, I, was like, when I was like 17, 17 to like 22, I believe. I came back when I was 23. Did a couple amateur fights. Then I went pro. I was at that itch. I just I just stopped at the wrong time, personal reasons, and just had that itch and never left, and I had to, you know, to scratch it. Well, yeah, Javier, those are all my questions, man. Congratulations on your newborn. Uh, 
February 23rd, we should probably be in the building, you know, hope to get you, you know, in, into an interview. And like Ness said, man, if you win, win or lose, if you if you put on a good show, main events is usually good with uh, bringing guys back on their cards. And I, I wish you nothing but the best, man. Thank you, man. We yeah, won. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. And uh, before you go, if you want to give any, you know, shout out maybe your Facebook where people can find you if they want to follow you. Pretty sure after your fight, I mean, a guy with seven, you know, seven wins and six knockouts, you're gonna put on an entertaining fight. So some of these fans, uh, fake fans, might want to follow you and uh, stay up to date with your career. Uh yeah. Thank you for the opportunity again, you guys. Um, shout out my Facebook, uh, Javier Loya, and then I got my publicist, uh, Javier El Gallo Negro Loya. Um, and uh, can I give a shout out to my sponsors? Absolutely. Uh, I would think uh, Power MMA, where we're in our new home. Great gym. You guys ever come down here to Arizona? Beautiful gym to work out. Um, Sacred Art and Tattoo, Tattoo Shop. Uh, Bulls on 43rd. It's a little Vietnamese restaurant. It's great. Um, and uh, Lima's Doka. It's uh, my main sponsor. Possibly manager later down the road. He's with the uh, Fort McDowell Yavapai uh, Nation. Cool guy, man. Cool guy. Great, great stuff. That's about it, man. I thank you guys again for the opportunity of having us over. And no problem. Like I said, man, the pleasure is all ours. And uh, you have a lot of sponsors. That means you got a lot of support already, man. You just got to go out there and do your thing. Yeah. Thank God. You know, th things happen for a reason, I believe. And uh, this time around, we got time, we got the time to get ready. We got the right stuff, the vitamins, the equipment, the time. So everything's we're ready to go. Ready to just go. I'm excited. All right, brother. Well, win or lose, we'll have you back on, man, because we're definitely gonna want to talk about this fight. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it again, and I'd uh, love to be back on the show. All right, man. Take All care. Right, good night, brother. Yep, well, there you have it. That was our guest. Uh, he's going to be coming over here to New York City. Vic, I'm scared. I don't like that he's coming over here on a Thursday and he's fighting Friday. Yeah, it's still cold as hell over here, man. Yo, how long was, was, today was a nice day. From the uh, CA to NY. That's just from CA. Well, he's coming from Arizona. That's going to be like a five-hour flight. Five hours? Yeah. That's a, man, that's those planes long. go fast. I mean, it's long as hell, man, when you're on that plane. What are you talking about? Yeah, five hours, so man. Uh, I remember I flew from Texas to Cali, dude, and uh, that box. That was like that was like three hours, dude. Like five hours. Six, I almost man. went crazy on a two-hour flight to Cancun. <laughs> I went crazy. I was like, what the hell? I felt like I was in New York. I was just, so many goddamn people. Yeah, man, I, I don't like flying because of that, but we're getting way off topic, but I'm going to just say that. I don't like flying. Wait, I still hear kids. I still hear the baby. I don't know where it's come from. It must I think he forgot kids, kids, man. It must be I when I see him. Somebody got kids. I got no kids. Who's this? Yeah, this day. Hey, did y'all move your number? Um, y'all move your um, your show? Yeah, man. We yeah, on this man, platform we, now. You see how much clearer it sounds? Even though we got an echo because somebody's listening somebody to the show on the computer. Okay, so um, this is the number to call in on? Yeah, you're live right now, brother. Let's talk boxing. What's on your mind? But turn that computer uh, off. What'd you say? Turn the computer turn off. The computer. Hold up. <laughs> now I got y'all on the phone, man. But you got it on speaker? Yeah, that's what it might be on. Hold on. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, what time y'all show starting? We're already live. It started You're at live, brother. You're live. 7 p.m. And uh, Oh, man. Y'all y'all take me off the live time. I'm just listening. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> man. You are here now. Dave, where you calling from? We're going to take your boxing, boxing knowledge. I'm in Cali now. I'm in Cali for the Virginia, Ohio, though. Okay. What part of Ohio? Akron. Oh, man. You up there with my boy, Matt. 
You, uh, he, oh he, yeah, yeah. He's from Akron, man. So uh, what? What's on your mind, though, man? I mean, you know, it's a dim week in boxing. But what fights are you looking up, uh, looking forward to? I want to see Brown go ahead and step up. I wanted to see that uh that Joe Diaz, but I guess he had got hurt. So I don't know. Everybody getting hurt this year. Man, so I, I already, guess. I already like, I already like uh Dave. He's a Joel <laughs> Diaz Jr. fan. I like that. Well, that that, that adversity, man. Once he got dropped and got off that ground and showed me some, you know, I'm like that. That's why I like to bet money. I need to see somebody go through some that adversity first. Mm, so you talking about that guy, uh, that guy Rob fight? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So yeah. you like you like Diaz. You like Brona. What other what what other fighters you got your eye on? Oh, well, Sean Porter, definitely. And then uh, Gary Russell, I was out there ringside when he fought uh, on the undercard of that K-9. So when I was out there ringside, boy, just hearing that speed and that power, I'm just ready for him to step up. But I see he got the goods. But once he step up, I really don't know. But right. coming out of D.C., I already know he's going to be strong. So I ain't too much worried about that. It's just, you know, for the promoters to go in and put him in something. So... You gonna oh, but you're in Cali now, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh damn! I was about to say you're gonna take that drive for that Kendall Holt, Lamont Peterson, but that's too far now. Yeah, I don't really trip on Peterson. I just know he's tough, and this and that. So, I mean, he should be able to beat Kendall Holt, though. That, that's what I told somebody on the show right here. Vic, Vic think Kendall Holt gonna win. <laughs> Yeah, can can the whole go and win, man? All right, we ain't even touched but, on that I yet. Mean, I mean, he hit hard. I mean, you can't take nothing from him. But uh, the mind, he versatile, man. He can box you and he can fight you and he gonna walk down. So I mean, if can the whole the only way he's gonna win is drop him. I don't think I don't think beat him anywhere else. Dave, I I gotta take everything from Kendall Holt because uh, who is Kendall Holt even beat? Like that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Vic, Vic just Vic just riding with him because he's from Patterson. That's all. You damn right. Not wrong with that, man. You know, Patterson got decent little fighters up there. Yeah, they got decent fighters out of Patterson. It's from my hood. I gotta go from someone that's from my hood, man. Yo, so so yeah, so let me y'all ask had you, a babe. nice little amateur back in the day named Sean. Man, I can't remember his last name, but he, he was decent coming out of Patterson. Hey, was hey. his name? Was his first name? Sean. Sean, he was like about a one, one twelve, one fifteen, or something like that. He was a little dude, very much out of there. But that, that was amateurs though. But he was decent though. Hey, hey, Dave, let me ask you: Is that something you know, like in the Akron water or something that you guys are big on amateurs? Well, I mean, they just now starting to look at us. Like, you know, Mickey Bays and all them and then you had the Timmy Austins back then when I when I was boxing and um that's where you really start from. But mainly it's football in there, you know, me and LeBron came out with the basketball, but it's mainly football first. So the boxing program ain't really that big and Because my guy that I was telling you about, like he's at, he's actually um an amateur official, and, like, he does all this stuff for the amateurs. He's, he's involved in the Golden Gloves, and he's always beating me down about some amateurs. Man, dude, this dude told me about Mickey Bay and Sean Porter a long time ago, and, uh, yeah, you know, he won't let it go. The, the only guy in Ohio that he doesn't respect is Adrian Broner. Everybody else in Ohio, <laughs> they're, they're, they're going to be champions, but Adrian Broner, he calls him a fraud and a fake. He probably never seen him. Yeah, man, I mean, he got the speed and that power, you know. I mean, once we 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 gonna see once they really step it up. But I mean, with speed and power, man, that that that's a lot right there. You know, now it's all about your heart. Can you really, you know, dish out what you're giving out? You know, we got good footwork. I mean, what else can you really take from him until we say him get popped a couple times? See, that's my main thing. See, I'm like a Holyfield fan and all them and. And what's the big tall dude breathing and all of them? You know, we've seen them get caught a few times and hit that deck and get back up and still come to work. Now, that's what I'm talking about. See, we don't know what a lot of these young boys are doing. We ain't never really seen them tested. Everybody looks good when they front running, you know? Exactly. See, that's that Lamont Peterson. He's got that in him. Like you said, right. Joel Diaz got that in him. Timothy Bradley got up off the floor. You know, these are guys that, 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 that shown their toughness. 
but Dave, I want to give you some more information. Um, we did switch platforms because, as you can see, the sound on this one is is a lot better. It actually uh, pumps out the audio at 128 kilobytes, which is CD quality. The only downside is there is no option to just stay on the phone and listen when you call right. you're live. But right. just go to the website, um, theboxingvoice.com, and all the information is on the podcast page where you can listen to the show live, how you can get it after the show is not live anymore. You know, if you want it on iTunes, Stitcher, tune in. We got all options and, uh, and availabilities there. But uh, we'd like to thank you for calling in. If you want to shout out maybe any Twitter or something where we could follow you at and keep chopping it up on the days that nah, we're not nah, live. No, no, I'll say no. That's what we do in Akron, too, man. I don't get that crazy <laughs> Twitter and all that, man. You know, <laughs> you, I mean, you know if you don't make your money in this business, you can do it like that. But for real, I don't like a lot of information out there in the streets like that. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to get y'all on your, on your thing, though, your website. You don't know what you're missing, though, Dave. It's a lot of fight fans on Twitter, dude. A lot. Yeah, a lot dude. of shit talkers. Turn out and missing that, and next you know all that mess stuff, man. <laughs> but I need to get out there on it, though. That's why I said I would use for the boxing. But other than so that, wait, that's so you're an I... amateur yourself? Yeah, yeah. It was back in the '90s, though. I, I was up in uh, Marquette, Michigan, trained up there. I got a little training center and up in uh, New York, up in Lake Placid. I was up there. I was there for like three years. I ended up getting sick, and then I got lupus. So okay. they know me from the 90s in that area, though. Okay. Well, Dave, thanks for calling in, man. Every Thursday and every Sunday, same bat time, same bat channel, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time. And, uh, you know, you can always call up, chop it up, but you're going to be live. <laughs> All right. There you go. All right, brother. All right. Peace. All right. Hey, we didn't touch on that Kendall Holt. Yeah, we could get to that, man. I mean, we still got another week, but... Yeah, we still got another week on that one. You want to get to it? The only one that's going to defend Kendall Holt is Vic. I mean, I think Peterson's going to take him. Man, I thought I thought Kendall Holt was going to whoop Danny. <laughs> I, I, I thought he was, man. Yeah, um, I don't know, but that was a dream. <laughs> that's funny, uh, not my boy Danny. Not Danny, dog. Uh, he's the truth, man. I'm telling y'all. He's the truth. People are going to see. You know, they, 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 they talk about Danny and his, that he's flat-footed and this, that, and the third. But when he ice, when he ice Zab Judah, then they're going to say Judah was old. You know what I'm saying? Uh, then, go ahead. Who's that? What's that? Vic? Time for yeah. Vic? Go ahead. Yeah, I don't mean to interrupt you. I think I think you're right about Danny. It's just I think I mean you can see it on Twitter too. I think people like, don't believe the hype of Danny just because they hate Angel. You know what I mean, it's like so like they don't like Angel, so they're like, oh, you know, he ain't the truth or stuff like that. But he's the truth. And I was telling the guys the other night this. I think if he fights Matisse, I think he's gonna take it to Matisse too. But that's my opinion. You know what I mean? Of course he is. But he said couldn't even be Zab. You yeah, that's what I'm saying. saying. Like, he had a tight fight with Zab. Like, he could beat the judges, man. Them judges, you know, they got good defense. Okay, but Ephraim, let me ask you this, because no one answers this, and I ask this question every freaking week. Okay. <laughs> I got to get a good sound box for this. Hold on. Let me find something good for this. Dun, 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 dun. I'm always a sound bite victim. <laughs> You know, I can't find nothing. It's going to be corny, too, because uh, I already uh, said it out loud. But name one B-plus fighter Zab Judah to be. B-plus. Oh, we're saying Zab is good? That's the thing? <laughs> we're saying he's not good. I'm oh, saying, oh, oh, I'm with you on that, then. All right, but, but, but the point is, he's not good, and he fought a tight fight with Lucas Matisse. Whether you felt he won and the judges robbed him, it shouldn't have been that close for that right. to happen. Yeah. The problem, I think the problem with Lucas is, like I was telling people last night, he can't, like, Zab's an all right boxer, you know what I mean? He's not, I mean, he's kind of, he, he was kind of slick, but he, he, won't be, he can't dominate people that have skill, you know, that give them angles, stuff like that. That's, that's, the, that's the reason why I think, you know, then people are like, oh, Danny fights flat footed or whatever. But, you know, he can move his head. He can give us angles, you know. That's how he's able to hit Khan with that left hook. You know what I mean? I think he's, I think he'll just knock Matisse out. Matisse can't deal with people with 
you know, with angles or got. Um, well, he did have a he did have a hard time with uh, Umberto Soto for whatever that how long that went. I mean, that fight was just back and forth, and it was a great fight too. Yeah, I mean, he went back and forth with the little the, the African kid he fought uh, before Mike Dallas Jr. Uh, a Jose, whatever. A Josie, a Josie, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Josie, whatever. Wow. Yo, this is what I say about Zab, right? Zab could look good until he get hit. Once he get hit, the boy gets scared for some reason, and he don't want to fight back. Then he start running, and that's what he did in the Matisse fight. He start trying to be – look, people get hung up on Zab when he fought Mayweather. I went back and watched that fight recently. It, it hasn't even been two weeks, I think. Probably about four rounds he won. I don't know what four you're going to give him because I, I scored that card. What was it? I give him the first and the second. The third round, there's no way he won that. I know that my boy Matt, he argues with me. I don't think he won that third round. I think Mayweather did enough, especially in the end of the round. He landed too many right hands, and he was digging to the body towards the end of the round. The fourth round, Mayweather won that. I, I watched about a month ago, but I wasn't scoring at that time. I just don't see it, man. I mean, Kaiser Mabuza, like, oh, oh he's a five-time world champion. How are you going to disrespect a five-time world champion? Who did he win these titles from? Like, who did he win these titles? I could win a vacant title. I could fight, you know, I don't know, the dude that scrapes the Piragua on the corner of the street, and I, and I could win a title. That Man, that don't count, man. That don't count for nothing. And Matisse, I like him. He's a good fighter. I don't know where people just came out of nowhere talking about, oh, he's a great boxer now. Uh, yeah, uh, they're saying Matisse is a good boxer. Uh, they were on uh, on uh, what was it on Showtime? They were saying, "Oh, his his boxing ability is improved and shit." I'm like, I think he got lucky. I mean, yeah, he, I think he was gonna beat him down, but I think he got lucky that it happened so fast. But I don't see him as this great fighter because Humberto Soto was giving him all he could handle. So, I I don't know, man. You're gonna have to explain that. That's the second time you said that, and I I will. Yeah, agree. I, 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 I didn't I didn't see Humberto Soto do anything, dude. <laughs> what? I'm going to agree with him a little bit, Vic. Oh, I don't know, dude. In the, fight, in the beginning of the fight, Umberto Soto was causing some problems. I'm not going to say that he won a round, though. I think that Matisse won basically every yeah, round. He, he, he won well, you, every round. You wouldn't be surprised if someone did give him a few rounds. Uh, I mean, I didn't score any round for him. I didn't I, score any round for him. I didn't either. But, but I will say that he can be outboxed. And do you think Danny's the man to do that? I think Danny doesn't have to do that. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Danny's going to make it a, a good slugfest. I mean, that, that fight will be a slugfest. I'm going to tell you why. I apologize for cutting you off. I'm going to tell you why. This is the thing. Matisse, everybody's like, oh, he's powerful. Oh, he's, he's a big puncher. Oh, he's this I don't think so. 140. Somebody name a 140-pounder that's fucking relevant that he's knocked out. Oh, damn. I messed up my sound bite. Somebody name a fucking 140-pounder that's relevant. Yeah. Here it comes. Should I mute? <laughs> I'm fucking waiting because there is no. He is dropped a few guys, though. He dropped a few guys, though. He dropped them. He ain't knocking niggas out. He, he dropped them. He dropped them, though. I mean, what, he, it, 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 come on, man. You got to give him credit for dropping guys. I'm not getting credit for dropping. Who did he guys. drop again? He, he dropped Zab Judah and he dropped Devin Alexander. Yeah. But Judah ain't get dropped. Judah took a knee. That's still a knockdown, dude. That's and still power. Power. Yeah, yeah. It's still a knockdown. It's still a knockdown. But we all know Judah has no heartbeat. And that's why he took I me. Mean, well, well, we'll see April 27. You know, your boy Danny better impress. If he doesn't I impress, I'm getting at you. Fights, man. That's what I'm I really want to know. Danny better knock him out cold or something. Because something short of a decision or a dominating decision, we're going at it. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this, right? You remember that Kendall Holt fight versus Danny Garcia? How Kendall Holt, your Patterson boy, looked at the first two rounds? I mean, he didn't get dropped. Until he got touched. Then what he do? Did he get dropped? When he got touched, what did he do? He stood on the outside and lost ten straight rounds. But he didn't get dropped though. Dude, 
I'd rather get dropped than lose ten straight. You know what? Losing ten straight. Yeah, but that that's that that's what Matisse did to a Josie. How many rounds did a Josie win? Hey, a Josie dropped though. Hold on, hold on. Huh? What? The Josie what? got dropped at the end. Yeah, but you just said the opposite. You said it. Yeah, I'm about to say, dude. No, I say, I I said, watch the fights backwards. He dropped. No, that's what I said. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we about to put this dude in uh in 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 radio jail. He's out of control. (laughs) Listen, let me tell you something. I'd rather get dropped than lose ten straight rounds. And here's why I'm gonna tell you why. Because it's just proven to the world that I'm afraid of you. So I'm staying away. I'm surviving. A Josie ain't survive. A Josie, yeah, a Josie, a Josie came to fight, and he lost every round. But he was in that fight. He was fighting like a true. Yeah, but he's, yeah, yeah, but I, I, and I still want to see a Josie before I want to see Hope. <laughs> Hell yeah, and he ain't lying. A Josie should have got another shot versus somebody. I'm, with, I'm hoping. Yeah, but that's what I'm Showtime. saying. That's what I'm saying. Matisse beat a Josie down. Yeah. He, I, I, so I mean, it's the same thing. I don't know. Until they fight, I don't even want to compare these guys. Like, it's, we're just gonna go back and forth until they fight. Well, I, I got I got Lucas if that ever happens. I don't think they're gonna fight. Let me tell you, son. They ain't signed Lamont Peterson for no reason. Peterson's gonna handle this fight that he did. It don't matter. They they signed Lamont Peterson and lose his belt. Don't worry about it. It's, it's all That's good, what I'm man. Saying. That's what I'm saying. They ain't yeah, signed. but he's gonna he's gonna lose it Friday. He's not gonna lose it to Garcia. Oh no no no! You're not listening. You're not even listening. It's bigger than that. He's gonna beat Kendall Holt. And no, you're not. He's gonna fight Matisse and lose that belt. They're gonna give Matisse a belt. Because they don't want him on Danny's ass. They don't want that fight right now. Yeah. On it bigger. You know that. We know boxing. Matisse and, and uh, Peterson is a good fight to me. You Which mean, I mean, mean comments? You mean Matisse and Hope, man. What are you guys oh. talking about this <laughs> Matisse and Hope? <laughs> yeah, bro. Uh-oh. 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 The, 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 the Lucas Matisse savior has come to the day. Uh. Well, someone's telling you, I don't think that Matisse can hurt Garcia if he catches him. Really? Hurt? Mm, hurt? Yeah, I, I think I think he could touch up Danny. Hey, I has, think he could touch Danny. Has Danny ever been on his back foot fighting? I haven't seen too many Danny Garcia fights like y'all have, but yeah, he was on the back foot with with uh, Theo Payne. Necessarily the back foot, but he was he didn't look good in the Ashley Theo Payne fight. Theo Payne, I ain't seen. That. I need to watch that. Who's this? Pound for pound, Vic. Yeah, my bad. I lost connection. No problem. Um, yeah, so he was on the back foot, I guess, if you want to call it that, in the Theo Payne fight. It was a tough fight, but Theo Payne wasn't a big puncher. But then he was inexperienced. And um, to answer that comment, yeah, I think Lucas Matisse could hurt Danny. Why not? Luke, uh, Danny Garcia got his nose broke uh, in a, in a, in a Garcia, I mean, in a Morales, Morales fight. fight. But All that right, don't right. mean nothing. I don't mean nothing. The boy fought with a broken nose. That's what that means. That's what that means. <laughs> I mean, he tough. He gonna get it in. He gonna get it in. Uh, in the in the in the con fight too, he, he was you know con fucked his eye up and won the first two rounds. The dude came back and I had him. I had con winning, but but Danny got the job done. I mean, yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, he got uh, you had you had you, you. What you mean you had him winning? Like you picked I him to win? Mere, no, he was winning the fight so far. How was he winning the fight? Uh, activity. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He he won. Let's say he won the first two rounds. Danny won the second round, ten eight. No matter what, what scorecard you, I mean, the third round, ten eight. So after three rounds, yeah. How many how many rounds did it go? Four. 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 Oh, I'm thinking. No, I'm saying the first two of the. He knocked him down when? In the third? In the third round. Third round. Oh, yeah, him third. Down. In he the first two rounds, Khan was, you know, he, he cut up his eye, I think it was. And, you know, he, he he won those first two rounds, you know. Then, that's what I'm saying, he got into his groove. He checked this dude out, and then he was, you know, he saw that the left hook was available, and he threw it. I'm saying, he, he just adjusts in there, you know what I mean? He's tough. That's what I'm saying. And I think he'll be a, a tougher fight for Lucas than what they're calling him on Twitter, the Grim Reaper and shit. Yes. The machine, the machine. Yeah, I want to get to these comments uh, from my, from our boy. Pete. Who's at 140? Let's c- compare and contrast. Hold on, hold on. Look, look. He said, man, all this hate on the machine, he has stopped 31 and 33. I'm going to stop right there and reply to Peter. Peter, 31 and 33 and 
Ju- Judah, Devin, a Josie, Umberto, and Dallas. Five minus thirty-one is what? Twenty-seven, right? No. Oh, you said thirty-six. So we no, no, it's tw- it's thirty-three. So we're talking twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight fighters. Twenty-eight fighters from fucking Argentina. Get your ass out of there with that whack ass comment. Anybody could beat up 28 people in Argentina. Then Marcos Maidana come over here with 28 knockouts and turn out to be a fucking bum. Hey, who, who's that uh, Abregoo guy from Argentina starting to catch another, my attention? Another bum. Hold on. Give him a chance. Nigga, he's only been on Showtime. He got Whoa. beat up by Bradley, and he just beat up Thomas Delerme. He took, oh, exactly. he took Bradley's hardest punches. <laughs> Other than that, though, I bet you see this is the problem with boxing fans. They don't remember. They only remember last year. What about when Carlos Abreu fought on Showbox versus Richard Gutierrez? You two the, um, and then yeah. tell me Carlos Abreu was good. You go life and death with Richard Gutierrez, man. You need to fucking turn into a babysitter or something. Anyway, I see. Anyway, I see. Someone him. Just, boxing is not that sad. This dude thinks Danny is a golden god. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey yo, Eddie! That's Eddie. That's Eddie, Vic. Um, all right. So let's finish with Pete comments. I, I do think he's a boxing god. Now nah, I'm fucking lying. I don't think that because I ain't like Dream. Dream think he could beat Mayweather. <laughs> cool, Garcia. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I was to his show the other day, and they was talking about he could beat Mayweather. I'm like, whoa. whoa. Oh my god. Oh. All right. I do believe the hold on. I do believe the fact that the better you put the opponent in front of Danny, the better you're gonna see him. That's right. I believe that. So look, Peter says he can box. He's making people retire, and he will stop Danny. Yeah, I said it. He knocked down Soto for the first time in his career. Come on, man. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take both of these again. Umberto Soto. He's probably just as old as fucking Santa Claus. And uh, what did he say here? He's making, he's retiring people. Who the fuck did he retire? I guess uh, Soto, didn't he? <laughs> that, was, that was a ref stoppage, right? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so that's one in the United States. Was a Josie a knockout? Yeah, I was. A- no. No, it was a decision. Oh, I mean, he beat him. Down. He beat him down for twelve rounds. No, he, hold on, Josie was a was a knockout. It was the last round knockout. Stoppage. Was, it was, was it was a stoppage? Yeah, stoppage. All right, all right. It wasn't a knockout. Knockout is you down for the ten count, man. Man, okay. stoppage is just as bad. You getting beat stoppage, up, man. Yeah. So now, so now he says, uh, he dropped Zab, dropped Corley like ten times, dropped Devin, dropped Soto. Man, you can't say he got no power when everyone getting dropped. Soda was 31. They were two years apart. A Josie was a stoppage. Dude, who hasn't dropped Zab? Costa <laughs> Zoo dropped Zab. Somebody else tell me Costa Zoo infamous knockout other than Zab's. Did, did Baltimore drop him? Who? Baltimore beat him, which is uh, even worse. Yeah, even worse for 12 rounds. Oh. I'm waiting. Peter, since, you, since you're too scared to call and you want to text, tell me. Who else dropped Zab? Oh, no. uh, Who the fuck don't drop Zab? You know what I'm saying? Devin Alexander, I'll give you that. We never seen him on the canvas. Before. We could we could keep comparing Danny and what's the name, but uh, like Vic say, <laughs> until until they fight, it don't matter. <laughs> yeah. I think I gonna fight. I keep telling y'all, Peterson's gonna fight Matisse next. I'm telling y'all. Can the whole gonna fight? All right, all right we got we got to jump into that uh, Rigo and Donaire. You got jumping. You flying, dude. That thing ain't even happening until April. Well, I mean, now at least everyone's happy now. Yeah, so at least it's we'll, set in stone, I guess. We'll, we'll, or... we'll have to hear anything about Donaire's Duck and Rigo, finally. And I will be heading to my local casino to put money on Rigo by KO. Oh, wow. You're going to lose your money, dog. No. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a gambling man. I'm, ta- I'm taking bets with everyone. I'm not That's a gambling it. man, but I'm putting money on Rigo. Don't ever right. go, go and jump fly and get caught. Yeah. I'll take everyone's best that day, ladies and gentlemen. Let me I'll see it on air. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, right? This is just going to be a brief breakdown of that fight. Because, of course, as it gets closer, things could change. But right now, based on their two styles, right? Who you got? Who do you feel 
is going to be forced to become the aggressor. Don't that will be from the gate. Thank you. Vic, I'm still waiting for you, but I agree 1,000% with Ephraim. But well, I think Donaire. I think Donaire has to be the aggressor because Rigo's not gonna throw punches. Exactly. Rigo's not exciting. No, don't get too far. Don't don't try to hate on my man. Somebody's not exciting. He's I'm not, dude. Showing you game plan. Okay. You already know it. We already know it. Don't think Donaire don't know. We He's already know the game plan. Style from counter puncher to aggressor now. So, what do Cubans do? From birth. They can move. No, 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 no. From birth, they are taught to fucking fight. Yeah. This whole gym in Cuba, it's boxing. In their school, there's no gym class. It's boxing class. You going to tell me Rigo can't win a 12-round decision? Vic, you serious? No. no. All right. No. Right. I'm sorry. How, how, what, do, what is Donaire going to do to them? Like, what, what, What's Rigo going to do? Try to land one left hand? Because that's all he's it, got, dude. And it'll that's work. He's got. Yes. And it'll work. It's work. Against who? What I seen the other night, Vic. You know what fight I was seeing the other night? And, that, and this was less than a week ago. I want to say 10 days at the most. It's got to be inside of 10 days. I, oh, you was on the phone with me. I texted you. Darchinian versus Donaire. Didn't that already happen? Donaire. Yeah, that already happened. Oh. And this dude, what's up with your head? No, they were talking about a rematch. That's what I'm talking about. Man, They're talking yeah. about a rematch. Yeah, I'm, call, I'm calling your pro officer. We're we getting you back in jail, bro. <laughs> Yo, Darchinian versus Donaire. Um, was he winning that fight in your eyes? Uh, I, I thought it was a pretty mm, – it was a back and forth fight. I don't remember exactly. that fight. Exactly. That's my point. He yeah, but Darchinian, Darchinian was the number one guy. He was tested, dude. No, I'm still no, not. No, 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 no. You know what I seen when I seen that fight again? People give him so much credit. Donaire moved down one weight class to fight Darchinian. He moved from 118 down to 115 to fight Darchinian, and Darchinian was moving up. It wasn't like Darchinian was fighting at that weight. He moved up, and Donaire moved down. And Donaire's already the bigger fighter. Yeah, go ahead. Hit the keyboard. Hit the keyboard. I hear it. <laughs> what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, what? You what are you they talking about? Then they fight at 115? Yeah, now that was when when freaking Darcheni was the number one guy, dude. Doesn't matter if he was the number one guy. What was his fight before that? At what weight? I have no idea. I mean, I can look it up if you want. Check it. All right, so Ness, who you got? Say the name. You got Rigo, right? I gotta get Jelmo, man. You kidding All right. me? All right, because I Don't mean, he's been fighting babies, man. He's been fighting shorter dudes in our say. And that's where you're wrong. That's where you're wrong. The fight took place at one twelve. Even worse. What and, mean, and even worse. Man. When you're in the, when you're in those younger divisions, those lighter divisions, you can come up and down, dude. That okay. people do it all the time. Okay. No, they the don't. Man? They don't. People don't do it all the time. It happens all the time, dude. Yeah, who was the bigger man? Who's the bigger man? Don't when you, when, Don't dude, when you fluctuate from 115 Donaire to 112, very hey, damn advantage on. on them. Hey, you can make the weight, no problem. If you can make the weight, it's not illegal, dude. If hey, you can I'm make the weight, that. I'm not saying it's illegal. You're not hearing the argument. The argument is, I'm clicking on it right now. It was at 112, right? Yeah. Okay. Matter of fact, let me go back. Donaire's fight before that. His la his four fights before that was 113, 114, 114, 115, 115. He sucked down to 112 to make that fight. He was the bigger man in weight and in height and in reach. And what does that matter? Chad Dawson was the bigger man in weight and in height and in reach. And what happened when he fought Andre Ward? He was drained. He was weight oh, drained. Oh, he was weight drained. He was drained. Okay. All he, right, was, guys. he was switching trainers every round. Yo, Vic, okay. I, did a, I did an interview with Virgil Hunter, and he said it himself. Check the video. Cool. He knew. So who cares? So if Donaire's weight drain, isn't the advantage to Vic? Uh-uh. Donaire oh. wasn't. Oh. Donaire. How do you know that? How do you know that? Did you talk to Donaire? Did you see him? Did you Dude, if you could make if you could make the weight, there's no excuses. The number Vic, one guy I'm was Vic Darchinian. Vic Darchinian was a... 
Victor Chinny was 28 and 0, the number one guy, the hardest hitting feared puncher at that time. Okay. And Donaire iced him. Iced him. Yeah, yeah. But All we, right, so what, what, what are we arguing here? We you knocked him out. Victor Chinny was a one trick pony. Oh, yeah, okay. So I, tell, tell Orlando De Valle that. Sure pros- couldn't figure out that one trick. A prospect <laughs> with 16 fights. That was, oh, but Vic was done. He was I don't there know why for the taking. Come on, man. They th- they, I'll tell you why they made it pound for pound, because they thought that Victor Chinian was done. Dude, Rigo's best win doesn't amount to any of Donaire's fucking hey, last five worst wins. Rigo dude. will never have a good record, dude. He'll never have numbers on his side. The dude's on his way out. I mean, the dude, he'll, he, who, who's he going to fight? My thing is well, this, though. Ephraim, Ephraim, it's not even about who he's going to fight. Is this. If they give Donaire, I mean, if they give Rigo the same fights they gave Donaire, He's not gonna win him. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I seen Rigo get rocked by prospects. He ain't prospects. gonna knock out Mighty Queen. I mean, he ain't gonna knock out um, Arce. Who knows? I, I don't. Oh, he's, to me, he's still untested. Come on, man. His best one is Rico Ramos. And what happened with Rico Ramos when he fought uh, my man last time out? He lost. Uh, no, he ain't gonna knock out Arce. He wasn't gonna know, knock dude. out Nikki Osha. I don't know. I, I, you, I, I, he's not battle tested. I, 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 I bet he'll. I bet he'll. I bet he'll knock him out quicker. Oh yeah, he'll knock him out quicker. Come on, man. Come on, man. He played on my boy. He got eleven he's, fights, eight KOs. Bottom line, who's the bigger puncher? He is. Who's the bigger oh, puncher? He, who's he? Who's he knocked out though? Uh, hold on. Who's the bigger puncher? You say. Who's he knocked out? Vic. Vic, let me that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on one second, hold on one second. You kill people for, for giving for for Matisse <laughs> and his thirty one KOs, but Rigo's got ten or whatever the hell is he knocked out? Roberto Maraquin, Tion so fucking Kennedy, uh, he knocked uh, Maraquin out. Wait, 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 guys. Let me defend myself. Let me defend myself. I'm gonna yeah. count. I'm gonna count eleven fights. Jose Lazaro one. Rosendo Sanchez two. Sal, I'm not even gonna give you these fucking retarded ass names. I'll give you their horrible records when I'm done counting to 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, right? Boom. Decision, TKO, TKO, decision, KO, TKO, TKO, decision, decision, decision. So he's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so it's almost the same, but Rigandau still has 8 knockouts, right? In 11 fights, Donaire has 7 knockouts. In 11 fights, but you want to hear the big difference? Because you already started smiling. For those guys that can't see you smiling, I'm letting them know. And you're about to turn that smile into a friend. <laughs> Donaire has seven knockouts on a 1-3 and three fighter, a 2-1 and one fighter, a debut fighter, a 0-4 and four fighter, another debut fighter, 4-5, and 7-16, 2-6, and 16-4. And and what does that have to do with Donaire now? Absolutely What nothing. I'm saying is showing you the nothing. power. Showing you the truth. The power. The power. Oh, okay. Look, let me put this out there, Ness. Listen, I don't... Listen, listen, I don't listen. Think. Mary, King, Mary King got dr- dr- stunned him. Cordoba dropped him. The, the chin is soft. Let, let's be clear. The, R- Rigandad has a soft chin. I'm sorry. All right. I'll give you that. Probably because he's always a little man. No, 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 no. I'm oh, not, come on. Let's stop making excuses before this fight even happens. Come I'm not on, making man. excuses, Vic. I'm well, talking. Well, I, I, already, I already heard this guy call him a little guy. All right. Well, on, Ephraim, let me get a chance here. All right. I'll give you that, right? I'm going to give you that, that he's got a weak chin. Suspect chin, same thing like Gamboa. But let me ask you this. So you're telling me a two-time Olympian with 350 amateur fights who knows how to box is not going to box safely the most important fight of his career. And you're telling me, number five pound for pound, Onito Donaire, with the best trainer in the sport, as per the BWAAs, is not going to have a game plan for a guy that just looks to land that left hand? Dude. No. no. Yeah. Okay. Because All right. Okay. He's done it. He's done it. You know how hard it is to get Olympic gold? And he did it twice on Come point. on, man. This is the amateurs. Wait, there's no challenge. Vic, it may not be the amateurs, but he can use the amateur style to win this fight. International, man. All International right. competition. All right. Box from right. the outside. Let he me can, let me right. say this. All night. All night he could jab I, 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 I'm hey, taking let, best. Let me say, best let me say this. Happens. Yes. 
Who'd you say was the bigger punch out of both? I'm just I'm not saying anyone's a bigger puncher. I'm saying they that they, they're both have power. Vic is saying Vic is trying to discredit Rigandow by saying who has he knocked out. I'm showing him that when get when when Donaire was eleven and zero, he knocked out nobodies. At least Guillermo Rigandow eleven but, but and 0, Don, knocking out but, names. But Donaire doesn't didn't have the hype at eleven and zero, and Donaire didn't have a belt at eleven and zero. Don't hate on so, my man. Don't hate on oh, my man. Donaire don't oh, have a oh. Donaire ain't a two a two time Olympian either. You fucking Who right. cares? Who cares if he's not? What does that have to do with this fight? Nothing. Don't the, matter how many goals you won. Don't mean shit. Don't box mean box shit. Box. Don't mean shit. Deontay Wilder's a bronze medalist, and we still haven't seen him do shit. That's Who else won medals? Come Heavy on, man. Heavyweights have different rules, though. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Context, man. What we're trying to say is because of the amateur skill is the reason he's going to be able to box. Yes. Okay. All right. Keep believing that. Keep believing and I that. Think, I, that, think that Rigo, I think Rigo, I think Rigo oh, stops him. Hey, yo, guys, guys. Peter's still texting, talking about he beat up a 30 and 0 Josie. Um, <laughs> Peter, <laughs> do me a favor. Wait, 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 guys. Do me a favor, Peter. Open box rack and check that a Josie fought all his fights in Europe. Vic, do me a favor. What do I call European fighters? Euro bums. Thank you. Don't talk to me about this a Josie character. He never fought nobody, man. Get out of here. Because he looked tough in the ring versus Matisse, a guy that we also don't know much about. All of a sudden, a Josie's a world beater because he got beat up. <laughs> Josie fought all the time in the U.K. Check his record, man. That's what I'm looking at. Yep, looks like Nigeria wants. Dude, I know my facts, man. People, t people leave me rude, mean comments, but I know my <laughs> shit. I know my shit. This dude fought in fucking Britain or UK, wherever is that, like, I don't know, 30, 30 uh, 29 fights. He had one fight on Showbox in America. That's it. And that shit was a tough one. And he said, okay, you want to say he's fought no one until 2010. Okay, since 2010. He's still talking about dropping Zab. <laughs> Dog, you, you, you need to drop that. Yeah, he needs to drop Zab. He, <laughs> he needs to control. Got robbed. He dropped Cordy literally nine times. He dropped Alexander. I mean, this is the same argument. What are you doing? Copy and paste in your Texas? <laughs> He's hey, great. Joel Diaz Jr. is the guy that fought Rob, Guy Rob, right? That was a good damn fight, dude. That I mean, To me, that could have gone either way. I remember that fight. Hey, friend. What was that? I'm about to start using my mute button on you. How the fuck could a fight go either way if he knocked the guy out? He didn't knock him out. Hold on. <laughs> it was another televised Showtime card. It was, man, it was on Showbox. It was another one. Guy Rob been on there a few times. He cowed out for you. Get out of here. Let me see. Man, this Ephraim dude is out of control tonight. <laughs> Oh, shit. Look, and look, he's, now, now he's defending Vic. He said, you talking about Rigo dropping people? Who has he KO'd this bit that is big? Again, if you go to Rigandau's resume, and when he has 11 fights in Do I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Donaire wasn't a champion in 11 fights. Because he didn't have top rank in 11 fights. It's plain simple. You're live on bo uh, the Boxing Voice. What's this? Yo, what's up, man? This is Tony. Tony, what's going on? Where are you calling from? Uh, Chicago. Chicago, the windy city. Tony, who you picking, Donaire or Rigandau? Um, I'm picking uh, Donaire. Why? Um, I just think that he's proven a little bit more as pro uh, professional. He's proven That's more. Not, you know, I mean, I mean, Donaire hasn't shown me a whole lot either. I mean, time to time. But I, I do think the Donaire's talented. And with uh, Garcia, you know, calling the shots and whatnot, I think he got a good shot, you know what I mean? But I don't think it's, like, obvious or, you know, a blowout or nothing like that. You know, I think it's going either way, but I'm probably leaning a little bit more towards uh, Donaire because of pro, the, the professional experience, and that's all I'm basing it on. Well, hey. really what I want to call is uh, <clears throat> you guys were talking about Danny a little bit earlier. Yes. And uh, I'm obviously, you know, I'm, a little, I'm, I'm partial to Danny. You know, I root for the guy. You know, he, he seems like that under, uh, underdog type. And 
I just had a question because you guys, you guys are in the, you guys are in the loop a lot more than I am, obviously. But what, what would you think about Danny going to the island and having some more fights to build his, you know, his name out there? You know what I mean? Because we see, you know, Puerto Rican board fighters, you know, Cotto and Tito and all that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's had a huge following. You know, I mean, do you think that's possible? Is, is, is it uh? Does it make sense? I mean, do you think that's something that'll help Danny? I I'm think because he, he seems like you know. I think out. it's possible because anything is possible. But I think at this point in his career, it's probably something that's not going to happen. And I'm going to tell you why. One, Danny doesn't know a lick of Spanish. I was I mean, about to ask you that. I've been around him so much, dude. One time they did a Spanish interview on him. And they had to give him his answers in Spanish, and he repeat them constantly, and he still fucked it up on camera, and they said oh. they would edit it out. Two, he's so far along in his career, being a champion and all, unified for that matter, for Peter Soprano out there texting me all his Matisse bullshit, um, that it's kind of hard to get him what would be considered a tune-up fight in Puerto Rico because there's no... 140 pound notable name in Puerto Rico for him to make that fight. Right. I guess because he's the champion, like I said, the possibility is still there. I guess because he's the champion, maybe they could take, I don't know, Vic, what's a 140 pounder that has a name? I guess they could make Kendall Holt travel to PR. A guy like Kendall Holt. Maybe they could, they could make a guy like a Josie travel to PR. You're, they can do it, but you know, Danny was born in Philly. His father was born in Puerto Rico. His I, th I think at this, they should have done it earlier. Yes, That's what I'm thinking they could have. Well, I think, I think, I think they're what they're they're trying to make Danny the Brooklyn attraction. I mean, yes. that, that's that's clearly what they're doing. They're, that whole Puerto Rico thing is too late to do it now. Yeah, it's late. It's Verdejo's time. What? What was your name again? Tony. Tony. Um, they have done it in the past with Michael Perez. They took Michael okay. Perez before the loss. Golden Boy took Michael Perez, and I think he had like four fights in Puerto Rico, and he doesn't know much Spanish either. But okay. he could defend himself a lot better than Danny in Spanish as far as speaking it. And, uh, yeah, they could have did it, but they. this is the thing. This is why I love Danny so much. They never believed in Danny. He was never the, the A side. He's always been the B side. Now is when they're like, Man, we can't get rid of this dude. We're going to have to do something. We're going to have to promote him properly. And that's why he's getting a Zab fight. But the first Eric Morales fight, he was fed to the Wolves. The guard, uh, the, the con. Um, he was fed. The Wolves. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't supposed to win those fights. Hello? Hello? You hear us? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Oh, you didn't yeah, hear that? Yeah, you know um, I'm sorry. Uh, I was going to say, uh, I didn't know that Danny didn't speak Spanish. Yeah, I know. And, and that'd be kind of embarrassing to go to Puerto Rico having an interpreter, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. It makes yeah. sense for him not to be out there, you know? But he could but, learn it, though, because his mother, I spoke to his mother, and uh, Jackie interviewed her, and uh, she speaks very good Spanish. His father speaks very good Spanish. Um, he could Andrew, up if he Andrew could Garcia be talking shit in Spanish. <laughs> Yeah, no. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I got an interview on the YouTube channel, all Spanish. Um, I, need, I need to check it out. Yeah, um, they could teach him, but at this point, I mean, Danny wants to be a rapper. He's he's too Americanized right now. He's he's making <laughs> rap videos. He's wearing, uh, you know, he thinks he's from Texas with the gold fronts in his mouth. Like, he ain't, he ain't trying to do no, you know, the most he gonna do is put a Puerto Rican flag on his shorts at this point. And that's about it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But uh, we were also arguing Matisse versus Danny. Who are you picking in that one? Um, yeah, that's <laughs> like I said. You know, I'm a Danny fan. You know, but see Matisse so hard because you look at him and the eye test tells you, man, that boy can fight. You know what I'm saying? That's what the eye test says. But then I look at his record and I see some of the clunkers he's thrown at times. Like, uh, when he fought Zab, you know what I'm saying? He fought a good fight against Zab, but that's Zab, you know what I mean? I don't know, man. It's, it's, I mean, he definitely got the power. 
you know, but Danny got power too, so it's hard to say, man. I, I have to, you know, I guess I go with Danny, you know what I'm saying? I mean, but, like, that's another one of those fights. I don't think it's, uh, but, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, man. I called you your show before, and I said that I wanted it. I want to see Brandon Rio, you know what I'm saying? That's what we want to see. Yeah, man, that's the fight that I think everybody wants to see. More than the Matisse fight is Brandon yeah. Rios versus Danny Garcia, but it's just that hey, fight yeah. that's never going to Hey, who, who was uh, Matisse going to fight before Dallas Jr. stepped in? Who was that? Uh, Hank Lundy. That Hank was going to be a good fight. Yeah. Yeah, Hank Lundy, yeah, yeah. yeah going to make Matisse look more of a monster than what he is. Hank Lundy has no chin. <laughs> That was a gimme fight. Ephraim, what, what boxing do you watch? I watch everything. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> you ain't seen Big Lundy get knocked out by... Molina? Yeah, I've seen that. You ain't seen get, you I get mixed up with Lundy and some other dude. You ain't seen him get knocked <laughs> by Beltran? Yeah, oh, Beltran was nice. And, and, and even in the Danny Williams fight, it was a tough fight. I like Lundy, and, and he could be good. He needs a trainer. He needs a, a stern trainer, someone that's going to tell him when he's doing wrong and, and stop him from showboating. He lost the Molina fight for showboating. Hey, hey what, what, do you, what do you think about Rob Garcia? I, I don't think – well, you're not too big on him, huh? Who, me? Yeah. I can't take anything away from Garcia. To he me, I mean – back. Look, he brought Kelly Pavlik back from the grave. He brought Maidana back from the grave for what it's worth. I don't yeah. give him too much credit, but Maidana is a different fighter to an extent. He's done amazing things with his brother, Miguel Angel Garcia. That's where I give him credit. He's done good things with Nonito Donaire. I don't think he's changed them. I mean, like Kelly Pavlik and uh, no Donaire, I don't think they've changed shit. I think it, they are who they are. You're wrong there. I'm going to tell you what to go back and look for. The left hook. Show me when Pavlik had a left hook and then check all his fights after Garcia. He'll use the left hook more than the right, and that's what actually sets up the right because they start getting hit with that left, and then they don't see the right coming because they're so used to seeing the left now. He, he's given Kelly Pavlik a left hook at this late stage in his career. I hate that Kelly Pavlik retired. I, yeah. Shut up. I want to see Kelly Pavlik and Chavez Jr. I, I just wanted to see that fight, or Kelly Pavlik against Froch, and that would have been that would have been a real good fight. Oh, yeah. I think he loses both of those fights. Yeah, but damn, I bet they're good fights. <laughs> I think that Kelly Pavlik doesn't have true power, dude. Um, he was good at what? Do we, he was a one fifty four champ too, right, Vic? Middleweight, middleweight. Always middleweight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think he's ever been that one. Knockout. His knockout was of Jermaine Taylor. Other than that, who he knocked out? Yeah, I, I was never uh, big on his power. I never believed in the power of it. And that's the thing. He don't got the power to stay in there with a frotch. Frotch just wants to stay in there and lock the door. He, that's what he wants to do. I don't think. I don't think he has the power to stop a Chavez Jr. from coming forward. And Chavez is going to do some mean body work. And then Kelly Pavlik. His scar tissue. Yeah, so I think Chavez will win that fight on a stoppage. But, man, we're, we ran over time here. It's 940. Guys, thanks for calling in. Uh, Sunday, we'll be back. Uh, stay tuned into us at theboxingvoice.com and at, at the Boxing Voice on Twitter so uh, you can stay up to date to see what guests we're going to have. Actually, I do know. Matter of fact, we're going to have Michael Medina. He's fighting versus Willie Nelson. Since we have Willie Nelson, we're going to get his opponent, Michael Medina. We're also going to have I think Eric Hunter and Carlos yeah, Eric Hunter and Carlos Castro, Michael Medina. But Thursday, we're gonna have a really good show. I can't wait for it. We're gonna have Lucky Boy. Uh I'm a soda. He's gonna be fighting Peter. I hope you're listening so you could call him up. Uh he's gonna be fighting Jesse Vargas, dude. Oh, that's going to be a good fight. It's a good fight. That's a good fight. And uh, I'm going with Lucky Boy. I'm going with Lucky Boy. And Lucky you Boy. Who's... Don't know Lucky Boy. I'm going to just say this. He killed somebody in the ring. 
with with headgear on. So he probably and he probably killed somebody out the ring too. <laughs> oh, Wale is, is he a is he a Freddie Roach fighter? Yeah. Yeah, oh, I like him. About Roach, man. He's more with Eric Hunter, the trainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freddie Rose just comes in to steal shine. That's what he's been doing lately. But, um, yeah, so that's the show for tonight. Like I said, follow us on Twitter. Check us out at theboxingvoice.com. Um, you know, boxingvoice underscore Vic at NetsGTO. Ephraim doesn't have a Twitter because, I don't know, he, he has – I don't know. I might, he's not, I might, it's not, his, uh, his parole officer says he's not allowed, bro. Yeah, I might want to throw punches with ATL on there. But, uh, man, thanks for listening, guys, and uh, catch you Sunday. Once.